Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, uh, December 15, 2015. We'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, things are running, on, running like a well machine already tonight. So if I turn my microphone on, that's what happens. Mic is too hot. Want to try it? Is it still on? Where is your mic? Leave it on, let him adjust the volume. Mine's on. Hello? Hello? Check, check. Check, check. You're really loud. Yeah. Wait, it's turned up way too loud. They're all too loud. Especially since there's no Bring audience. Bring them all down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear Lieutenant, us? can you hear us? <laughs> okay, so um, this is the public session. We're starting off this evening. Board previously started uh, the evening in executive session where we discussed uh, purchase exchange lease or value of real property in East Main Street because an open session may have had a detrimental effect on the negotiated position of the board. And we conducted strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel relative town manager. Coming out of the, tonight's executive session, I am pleased uh, to report that um, the town has uh, been negotiating with the town manager on a new contract. And just uh, right before we walked in here, the town manager and the board of selectmen uh, agreed upon a new contract to, to take effect, um, uh, I guess, actually uh, at the end of this year, at the end of this fiscal year. And um, the board voted unanimously 5-0 in favor of this. And uh, Mr. Kamala, we couldn't be more pleased to have you back. So. Thank you for uh, your continued service to the community. Thank so. you. All right, we'll have a signing ceremony later. And we'll start off uh, the evening here, as we always do, with public session. Uh, residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Do we have any? Seeing nobody in the room to actually do such a thing, we will move along to the consent agenda. A couple items on the agenda tonight. First is special officers. The board will consider approving the following individuals as special officers for traffic control only to a three-year term to expire December 15, 2018. Shannon Jackman, full-time public safety dispatcher. Nicole Corsi, full-time public safety dispatcher. Michael Prescott of the Hopkinton Fire Department, town resident, 14 Holt Street. And Ken Clark of the Hopkinton Fire Department, 58 Grove Street. Second is a gift. The board will consider accepting a gift to the Hopkinton Public Library from Unibank in the amount of $2,500 to be spent on Hopkinton Public Library programs. Third item, marathon fund requests, an action item. The board will consider approving the following marathon fund requests. $6,000 for six one individual $1,000 scholarships to graduating seniors. $1,050 to the Hopkinton Ashland Youth Cheerleading group for rental vans from the ho hotel to the national competition site and $1,500 to the Hopkinton Junior Hiller Ice Hockey. Would anyone like to break those items out? Number three, please. Break out number three. Anybody else? Chair's going to break out number one, so I guess we're going to do them all individually. <laughs> so, um, Process of elimination. I know, exactly. So starting off with item one, Ms. Kamal, do we know, do we, have we typically, I, this is the first time I've ever been asked to appoint a fire department member um, as a special officer. Have we, is this a... Are they qualified for that? Is this, is this something we've done historically? Maybe Lieutenant Wallace can come on up and talk about this. So, so through the chair, I also recall we have done in the, this in the past if there's, a, if there's a need for them to conduct traffic at the scene. All right. But this is to do details. Chuck, do, do, you have a, do you have an insight? Yes, good evening on uh, behalf of uh, Chief Lee, who is home uh, nursing a uh, two-day flu. Okay. Um, I am here to speak regarding the uh, request for the appointment ah. of special officers. Good. To your question, Mr. Pileco, yes, we do currently have some members of the fire department okay. that are also special officers. And as Mr. Moser alluded to, they are special officers for traffic details only. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is uh, if they are appointed, we uh, provide the training uh, for the special officers as well as a review of our policies and procedures that are appropriate to their duties while uh, directing traffic. Okay. So, uh, not to belabor this, Chuck, but just to ask the point clearly. So you've done this before, you've had no problems, it works fine. Correct. There's nothing special that these folks can do. Absolutely not. Do. Okay. That's all I cared about. Thank you. Anybody else any questions? Okay. Channel 10, a motion to appoint the special officers listed. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, present, not voting. That's unanimous. So all those individuals are appointed as uh, special officers for traffic purposes only. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Could I, there was an attached list. And could I just ask a question, just sort of a general question? Norman, some of these, some of these special officers on this list are not residents of the town. Is, has that ever had any bearing on whether people are appointed special officer in the past, you know? If it's something we should I need consider to that again. Yeah. Uh, through the, the chair, uh, for the most part, I think you may be referring to uh, police department dispatchers, our communication specialists. I do not believe there have been any issues in the past regarding their participation as special officers. And most importantly, uh, and Chuck, feel free to jump in here, uh, I believe Chief Lee, in fact, has reviewed this list most recently. Okay. Satisfied with the list as presented. I I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, okay. man. Good. No it may be marathon related as well. Yeah. All right, item two is a gift. Uh, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to accept the gift uh, from Unibank for $2,500 to the Hopkinton Public Library. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Second, any further discussion on that one? All in favor say aye. 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 President not voting. That's unanimous as well. Thank you very much to Unibank for the generous gift. And the third was marathon fund request. Mr. Sistari had a question. Yeah, you know, I guess um, I just thought that before we give away uh, over $8,000, it should be something that's discussed. Um, but one thing that I noticed is in items two and three, well, I guess in all the items, so I, I, it probably takes away my argument, but uh, with two and three, these seem to be something that's going to be you know, possibly recurring. It's nothing that's purchasing anything tangible, although I understand the scholarships aren't either. Um, just wanted to make sure that we're aware of that, in particular the uh, Hopkinton Junior Hiller Ice hockey no. team. There's I'm reading the application, and there are three teams, and it's for ice time, and you know I'm just not sure. I, I'd never heard of the group before. Uh, not to say that uh, you know I just don't know. Is this a new group or or what? We've typically bought. Uh, yeah, that one is a little unusual. I noticed that with the ice time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually it's a special event or something or something that they require. I just thought that it was worth opening a conversation for. You know, I mean. In general, I have no problem. These are all kind of, you know, helping helping promote athletics, uh, you know, and, and, and active uh, community among our children. So in general, I don't have a problem, but I just want to make sure that uh, that's at least brought out as a conversation point. Okay. Does anybody have any thoughts on this or anything they want to do about it? So we have a policy around this, right, that we did some time ago. So I'm assuming that all these applicants have made it through the policy that was put in place. Uh, the board may recall, in fact, uh, there is no specific new policy, but rather what the board did was review an existing policy. And, and these would all meet that existing policy? That is correct. Okay. Let's promote general well-being and right. good health of the students of Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. Well-educated and healthy community. Okay. okay. Is there anything anyone wants to do about this? I mean, do you have a proposal, Mr. Sistani? No. I just um, wanted to make sure that it was, yeah. Like discussion. Okay. All right, so Chair, I'll a motion to approve the uh, listed marathon fund request. So moved. Second. Further discussion on this? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimous as well. <coughs> item four on the agenda, appointment of acting town clerk. It's an action item. The board will consider appointing an acting town clerk until the regularly scheduled May election to fill the vacancy being created by the resignation of Jerry Holland, effective on December 31st, 2015. Mr. Kamala, can you talk to me about the process from here? We need to fix this volume. You got to, you got way too up, and so you're just getting massive noise. Can we just turn it off over there? Yes, um, through the chair. Per the town charter, if a vacancy occurs in the town clerk's office, the assistant town clerk uh, then uh, is appointed to serve as the town clerk until such time that uh, an election occurs. And in this case, the election is going to be in May. 
Um, I have reviewed, um, together with the uh, Human Resources Director, uh, Brenda McKean, who is the Assistant Town Press uh, Resume. I have spoken extensively with uh, the outgoing Town Press, Jerry Holland, who highly recommends Brenda McKean. Uh, by way of introduction, she is the Town's Assistant Town Clerk. Uh, between 2010 in September and August 2013, she was the assistant town clerk for the town of Stebridge um, until she came here to Hopkinton. So all in all, she has about five years of experience working as an assistant town clerk. <coughs> as you all know, um, and this was celebrated at one of the prior uh, Board of Selectmen meetings, on her own, uh, she did take up the certification process and successfully completed that process. So she is a certified town clerk. Um, she's um, very customer friendly, uh, conscientious, uh, and is an active participant here uh, at Town Hall. Okay, so does anybody have any questions uh, about this, Mr. Hurd? What was the charter process again that was outlined? Again, specifically, if a vacancy occurs, the assistant town clerk then serves as the town clerk until a new town clerk is elected uh, and sworn into office. And by way of schedule, the next election is in May. Does the town clerk have to be a resident of Hopkinton in order to be elected? You have to be a citizen of the town to be elected as to an be officer. Elected, yes, but this is not the election. This is the appointment. So it's not a natural successor type situation. In other words, to hold a job, you don't have to be a live in town. You just have to live in the town to be elected to the be job. elected to hold the town to the job. Interesting. A loophole. We found it. And what about backfilling the assistant town clerk's position for the next six months? I'm discussing that issue with the uh, human resources director. We are ready to look into temporarily filling that position until next year in May. However, we could not move forward on that issue until the board decided what to do tonight. And we have no, sorry, Mr. Chair, one last. We have no um, special towns pending this spring before regular. We don't have any heavy sort of administrative clerk work pending, do we? We do, if I may. Go ahead. We do have the, uh, the town charter update process. The review committee. The review committee that's going through. And the clerk is a big piece of that. Town puzzle. clerk. No, no, yeah. she just makes appointments. Oh, she's just doing the appointments? Yeah, she's, she's not on it. She just appoints two people to it. Which, well, she appoints one person to it, which she's already done. So we lose that knowledge anyway in that process, but okay. Uh, but no other major. No, there's no complicated pending. elections coming up or any, you know, any. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Ms. Kamal. Yeah, in terms of the time between now and the annual town meeting <coughs> the usual calendar events yeah. where the town clerk's office has to be part of the process of putting together the warrant uh, as well as uh, preparing for the elections and developing the elections calendar. Right. And Brenda does not live in town, correct? That's correct. She does not live in town. <coughs> All set. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Mosier. Um, somewhat related question. A couple of years ago, didn't we have a town meeting vote on whether the, the town clerk was appointed or elected? Yes, yes. through the chair. Um, this was about perhaps four, four years mm -hmm. ago. There was a town meeting vote uh, which was affirmative. However, the um, issue failed at the ballot. So maybe a future agenda item for be, would be for the board to discuss that because I know that our current town clerk, Jerry Holland, has worked very hard to, to ensure that, that, um, that there was professional capabilities in that office. And uh, I think it's at least worth the conversation. Uh, but it, so it sounds like the process is pretty clear cut here. Yeah. I would actually roll, my, my vote would be to roll this into the charter discussion about whether mm -hmm. we want to elect a town clerk anyway. So, uh, Mr. Catino. No, I jumped in there with mine. I'm, I'm good. good. Mr. Cisnari. Uh, you know, I think that all, uh, well, the, the questions that I had have already been asked, so I'd just like to take a second to uh, thank Jerry for her years of service. Uh, you know, certainly she's had an incredible impact uh, both on the second floor and the first. 
and um, you know it's going to be sad to sad to see her leave town hall. I hope we still see her around town. And uh, but I, most of all, I just want to thank her for her years of service with both the town manager's office, selectman's office, as well as town clerk, and the changes and improvements that she's helped to make. Okay. Well stated. Well done. Okay. No other questions. So the um, the chair will a motion to appoint uh, Brenda McCann as the acting town clerk in accordance with the charter. So moved. Second. Are there any salary considerations we have to review and, or make any decisions on? The human resources director and the town manager did discuss the issue of salary with, with, uh, with Brenda, um, subject to tonight's discussion. And I can offer the board without getting into details that uh, this will be within the budget. Okay. That doesn't say anything. <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. I mean, considering her, her years of experience, her education, and the fact that at this point we may go for some time without an assistant, uh, I think the a salary of approximately 65000 would be would be, would be appropriate. Um, Recall that when Jerry moved into this position, she was paid higher than that amount, and Jerry currently is uh, at least five, five, five thousand above that number. Okay. So, with that, then we make the assumption that uh, the vote that town meeting made for the town clerk's salary goes with the person, not the position. No, just throwing it out there. Yeah, but that's not what the town meeting voted. Yeah, you're right. My, my understanding is when town meeting voted the amount, um, it was voted specifically for uh, that particular budget, uh, taking into consideration attributes and aspects of the incumbent. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fair enough. <clears throat> okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I just think we need to make sure we set this salary appropriately within the guidelines of the personnel committee recommendations, town meeting, and perhaps town council. I just, I understand what you've got to figure out, but we should just, let's do it right. So I would encourage it as part of this vote that we make sure that that takes place. <clears throat> so uh, contingent on, contingent, having this vote be contingent on town council review of uh, the, the appropriateness of, of the salary or legality of the salary, something to that effect. Yeah, so, so, so we're going down a little bit of a complicated yeah, path here. Yeah. Town, meeting, town meeting approved a salary for the town clerk. Uh, uh, Which is 72 G's or something like that. That's the number, right? That's sort of the number. Right. Now, right. it's, it's um, I just want to point out that that number has already been set. Right. And so I don't, I don't know that that there's an obvious pathway here. I mean, if we if we want to try and put a number to this, I guess we can. But well, I mean, no, I guess. And and what I was saying is they voted that number, and if we believe that they voted it for the position, then that's, that's what the position, position play, pays. If we believe that they voted it for the person in that position, then I can see where we make the number different, whether it's lower, higher, or that's whatever. what I want to review because I'm all for. Saving some money here if we can, but we have to be reasonable and fair about it too. And we got to be within the guidelines of the town meeting. Right. Mr. Mosier, you had your hand. So, yeah, through the chair, so not only reasonable and fair in the town meeting, but also she certified, right? Certified to be a town clerk. She's done great things. Uh, from what I hear from Jerry, she's done a fantastic job. And um, we probably want to encourage her to stay with the town through this period. Or maybe and maybe beyond. I mean, if you want to do it your way, then what we should make the motion be to have the town manager enter into negotiations with the assistant town clerk about filling the job of interim town clerk, and then he can come back to us with a salary and everything else. We can decide if we want to appoint him to that position or somebody else. So that would be the pathway if, that I think we're all. We have time to do that between now and the thirty-first. Well. 
it certainly means we'd have to meet again to how, prove it how, or to pick somebody else. Yeah, and how prescriptive is the town charter as far as, I mean, it sound, granted, you know, we can all make our vote however we want to make our vote, right. but it sounds like the tar town charter is pretty prescriptive that we appoint the assistant town clerk as the interim. Is that what the charter says specifically? We appoint the assistant town clerk as the interim? That is correct. So who made the motion? Well, I spoke it. Town I spoke, spoke it. it. I, I moved, John it, moved it. And I think John seconded. Seconded. So you moved it. Would you take a friendly amendment to your motion to uh, to include a review of the salary by the town manager, the town council, and the applicant, uh, such that everyone's on the same page in agreement, such that all, everyone's in agreement as to what that number will be for this six-month period. Does that work, Mr. Chair? It's a valid motion, I, I think. Um, so before I accept yeah, that, let me just, yeah. so, so you have, I thought you said you had discussed this with HR and the applicant already. Yes. And you're all set from that perspective. I could use. And you're thinking with town councils to ensure we're complying with the charter. Correct. And, and the town meeting vote. Town meeting vote. A year or two back. Okay. Accepted. Okay. So we have an amended motion. So go with this a second? Sure. Okay. So the amended motion is to appoint Brenda McCann as interim town clerk until the next, until the town election, acting town clerk, what I say? Yeah, acting town clerk until it's the town election in May. And then subject to review of the salary by town manager, HR, and town council and agreeing it's what? Appropriate, appropriate, appropriate for the person in the position. In the Correct. process. Yeah. Okay. That's what we. That's what I think we all agreed to. Okay. Any further discussions about that, Ms. Kamal? You good with it? Is it? Does yes. that? Does that sufficiently clear? Clear? Okay. So we have a motion of a second. We had further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Present. Not voting. That's unanimous. Okay. So there's the motion. We uh, have our marching orders here. All right. Off to tonight's fun event of uh, the marathon invitational entry lottery distribution. It's an action item. The board will hold a public, it says random, we'll see about that, distribution of marathon invitational entries to, to qualified applicants for the 2016 Boston Marathon. Okay, so let's see. So every year we get a, a set of um, numbers for guaranteed entry into the Boston Marathon given to us through the generosity, continuing generosity of the BAA. This year, Ms. Kamal, we got 50 numbers. We have a list of... 29 that are proposed to be give, provided to town uh, departments, principally the, the police department, which uses them to um, <coughs> provide them to other departments in, uh, in gratitude for their voluntary service during um, the marathon. Um, uh, we how it, so that leaves us, assuming we accept those departmental requests, that leaves us with 21 entries left and we have 18 community, 19 community organizations, 18 of which are not-for-profits. Um, and the, um, the question is, what do we do about those? So just in the interest of moving this along, I mean, uh, this is just to uh, truncate this conversation to the extent possible. Um, uh, there's a list we have at the bottom of the departmental requests, in the middle of it are non-town-based organizations, which are, there's three groups, and then up top are 19 town-based organizations. The sole organization that's not a registered 501c3, as it's been described to me, is the Hopkinson Police Association, um, which sort of goes against the general rule we've had of having to go to 501c3s. They're also not being disadvantaged because they get four, Mr. Kamalo, correct me if I'm wrong, three numbers anyway. So, um, so they're, they're um, I think if the board determines in, in their wisdom to leave them out, they're still, they're still covered through other avenues. So if we were to do that, we'd have 18 organizations left applying for 21 numbers. And again, my initial proposal, just to 
just for contemplation would be, um, I think three deserving ent entities would be the Hopkins and Tax Relief Fund Committee, which uh, provides tax, um, re obviously tax relief to senior citizens in town. I think that would be a worthy entity to give another one to. On the other side, to bracket this a little bit, would be the HPTA, which obviously benefits the, the younger folks. And then I would also propose that, um, given that we're about to start a big project for them, we give one more to the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation this year. So that's the summary and my initial thoughts on this. Over to you, Mr. Mosier. Uh, I'll take a pass for now. Take Mr. Mosier. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll listen to further discussion. So, Mr. Mr. Sestari. Um, no, you know, I mean, it all you sounds good. It? You know, like, like you said, this is this is uh, one of the one of the fun things that we get to do. And uh, and for me, there's a distribution component, but it's an even better day when we get to see the results from the prior years. And I've and I know that we already saw the results from last year, but looking at them again, uh, you know, it's nice to see the impact, uh, the positive impact that these numbers are having throughout our community. And um, you know, it looks like we have a, a good group of applicants and uh, hope that they find some, some strong fundraisers. Okay. Uh, Ms. Coutinho, have you had a chance to reference that? Should I come back to you? No, this is, the, this is it's a, it really is a great list. And you know, it, what, a, what a great thing that the BAA gives us to, uh, for all these organizations to do their fundraising. Um, and, and like um, Mr. Sassari said, the, uh, the numbers that, that it brings in just helps out everybody. And, it's, uh, and I'm just glad that we have, uh, we have enough numbers to give. Mr. Uh, Hur, over to you. Um, so I had one person reach out to me that I forwarded to the town manager's office, and I believe that is the Children's Hospital uh, application, and that's for one number. Is that, so is this group of the non-town-based organizations, Mr. Chair, is that in your thinking as you describe what we may want to consider doing? Or I, those outside that? I had left them off because we had so many applicants for the the numbers in town and, and everyone's actually and as you see everyone asked for multiple numbers so I didn't actually do the math but there's probably um, you know 80 numbers worth of requests from town organizations and of course they can use the money the, we also confirmed that these entities get hundreds literally hundreds of numbers from the BA as is I think the Children's Hospital gets 180 or something and Boston Medical Center gets like 120 so there's there's 160 for the Children's Hospital and 80, sorry, 80 for the Boston Medical Center. So the other concept thought was the marginal benefit to them compared to the benefits of these organizations in town, which we have confirmed don't really get them from other sources, with the exception of the Lisno Center, um, is fairly dramatic. Um, these, other than the, you know, 17, 16 of these entities that are on that list in town don't get numbers from anywhere else. And the others all do, and so that was the became the sort of um, again the marginal benefit. <coughs> so we have 21 in total, correct? We have outside the organization. 21 in total for 18 501c3s, all of which are in town. None of which, except for the Lisno Center, get get any numbers from any other source. Gotcha. And again, so the idea would be for the next course, the Lisno Center would just get another one from us. Okay. So I was just, my only thought, and again, I'm not open to anything, was just to try to bracket this to kind of do a more senior-focused thing, a more school-focused thing, and a more overall school community thing. Outside, just slightly outside the scope of, of this drawing itself, um, is there any way of having the distribution of these numbers. So we've got the, we've got the, the uh, raffle or you know, the, the drawing that we do today, but then there's also the other 28 or 29 bibs uh, that are given to various departments in town. Is there any way of uh, enforcing a trickle down that these bibs end up for the benefit of 501c3 organizations? You know, whether it's one in Somerville or Holliston, I don't care. But just making sure that this is getting to some nonprofits and, and helping communities somewhere um, as opposed to other organizations. Go ahead. Yes. Um, 
the marathon policy that was adopted by the board about four or five years ago actually authorizes the board to uh, develop any specific regulations that you may need or may deem necessary uh, year to year. So, you know, as I look at, you know, one of the bibs ends up with EMC. You know, I mean, obviously EMC is not 501c3, but, you know, I mean, if we can get them to say, yeah, well, whatever money is raised through this, uh, you know, goes to, you know, whatever, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, or the Liznow Center, or something, um, you know, just, just to make sure that the money's going and having the positive effect that, that we're trying to pursue here. And it's a discussion for next year, I understand that. But. We have, you're right, I mean, the tracking breaks down once they leave town, right? So you give 14 to the chief, yeah. he gives them to, you know, group, other town departments primarily. And then we have no idea. Uh, yeah, and, and I understand. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna you know get some forensic economist going through here, uh, <laughs> but you know at least kind of sending the message yes. that that's the intent. Yeah. I agree. It's a worthy question. There were three days before on that because we don't know where they are. Yeah. It's just going to some of the things that we've got to do on this. Then the question is how much control we want to exercise. We did get a, a tracking of all the numbers last year. Are we in accounting for all of them? We do. I think yeah. over the last two years we, we have requested the... Yeah. So maybe this year we start with a, with a requirement that if they take the number, they have to provide us the detail on who, the, who ran the race and what was the purpose. Mm -hmm. Maybe we find out if they actually are going to share of the organizations yeah. or not. Yeah. That's one option. That's in that grouping down below. Yeah, so, like yeah. a 14 for the... You know, the on the last year's the results. 23. On the last year's results, it's the top grouping above the line. So, so if, if we were to take, just do the math here on these, we have 50 numbers and, quote, the market value, end quote, to raise funds for this number, per number, is about $8,000. That's $400,000 that we're talking about here, the potential for people to raise. We do it's a lot of money. Yeah, we do about five. You know, yeah, I mean, looking at these numbers, there are a few tens and eleven thousands in here. I bet the average here is around six, five to six anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's still, yeah, three hundred thousand. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, what does the board want to do about this distribution? Do we have. Um... So, I, I, I think your suggestion makes sense. Um, Specifically, I don't see anything in the policy currently that prohibits non 501c3s. I oh, we'd, we'd always, we'd always, but, them, so. but there's some general principles here, you know, that expound some of the, you know, altruistic, non profit ish type right. philosophies. But in lieu of the fact that um, uh, the, the Hobbiton Policemen's Association gets, gets numbers from another source, like you said, right? And your suggestion was uh, tax relief for seniors? Yeah, again, so I was just as a, just an idea. I'm trying to think of something, yeah. for, something for everybody. Right, right? and so that's new this relief, year too, right? Tax relief, HBTA, so bracket the town more or less, and then the all town organization would be the library. And so I was going to do one, one of each of those. Was, that was is, my concept. Is that new this year, the tax relief one? Applying for this number? Yeah. Y yes, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a committee that was uh, formed in town how many years ago? Mm. Many, many oh, years right. ago. Oh, right. Yeah, I know that. I just, I just, I didn't recall having seen them on, they the, haven't done on here before. before. But they gave away five or ten thousand dollars a year. So clearly, yeah. if we could do this, I, we, I think we, that's, can, we can make an enhancement in their ability. Yep, I think that's absolutely a reasonable suggestion. Okay. Anybody got any other? We need to have the chief tell uh, Shrewsbury and Westboro they need to step it up for their fundraising. We'll bring him in for skating. <laughs> okay, so does anyone have anything else they want to discuss about this, or should we just move this along? Let's move along. Okay, so uh, the chair wanted to get a motion to approve issuance of uh, the 21 remaining entries as follows one to each of the town based organizations, with the exception of the HPA, and that's Purely, I guess we can let, let's stipulate that's purely because they're getting numbers from they're elsewhere. Getting numbers right? from, so the, they're not just from elsewhere. Yeah. And then the three million that leaves eighteen. That's eighteen. The three million entries will be reallocated one to the Hopkinton Tax Relief Fund Committee, 
one to the Hopkinton Parent Teacher Association, and one to the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation. So moved. Second. Can we for a discussion? Anybody want to do something different? I feel like there was not enough drama around it this year. Was, this yeah. is the first year there hasn't been yeah. some big hiccup so in the math or something. Hiccup. Yeah, exactly. you need a, you need a well, I did ask for more when, when, the, when the BAA was here. I yeah. did say, hey, could you give us no some numbers more? for ISIS? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion to second. We've had further discussion. We've had no great breakthroughs. Uh, so that the number, uh, well, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, President, of voting. That's unanimous. So that, can we inform all those folks that they've been allocated? Can we turn the VA profusely? We want to make sure we say again to them we're grateful for what they do for us. And then also, Mr. Kamal, let's make sure, as we do every year, that these folks have runners lined up quickly because um, this doesn't go better as we get closer to the race. Yeah. So let's make sure we get they. I think we did this in the last couple of years, right? We had them come quickly to us with a runner or if they need a runner, and let's figure this out because if we have to reallocate, we should, um, we should do so. Yes, sir. In fact, through the chair, this year we have two additional resources that will help in that regard. The BAA has identified a staff person here in Hopkinton who can work with local organizations who are seeking runners as well as assistance and training uh, on fund development. Okay. The uh, Michael uh, Lisno Center also provides training to some of the in-town uh, organizations on how to uh, identify runners and also how to do the fundraising. Okay. All right, so let's make sure we get those folks out there. Great. Let's make sure we know them. And we did this before, Mr. Hurdy, your point. I think we also tried to set some kind of expectation. It sounds like five or $6,000 is the expectation we have for people. And um, we haven't passed it. We'd, we'd, we'd look to we take that into account when we issue numbers, but I think everyone's going to tell what they're supposed to be. Right. Good. Excellent. That was, uh, that was much easier than that. Okay. 730 item number six, Charter Review Commission number appointments and action item the board will consider appointing a representative to the Charter Review Commission. We had this conversation two weeks ago. Um, the uh, Charter Commission needs to get moving. Uh, the goal of them is to, is to meet. They're required to meet it on the, to bring something to town meeting in the 10th year following the Charter, which is next year they have to bring to town meeting. So everybody else at this point has appointed their members to the Charter Review Commission other than the Board of Selectmen. We'd had a conversation last two weeks ago um, where we decided that uh, we wanted to have a selectman be the representative. I think, Mr. Hur, you had a you had another trustee um, commitment that evening, so we decided to postpone this to include you in the conversation to see if you had interest in the role. So, um, uh, Mr. Sestari has expressed interest in the Charter Review Commission. Uh, does anyone else in the board selectman have interest in the Charter Review Commission? I have a lot of interest in what they're going to do, but I'm pretty much maxed out at the moment. Wants to pull the levers from afar. Okay. Two. All right. Shall we make a motion. Go for it. Make a motion to appoint Todd Sestari to represent the Board of Selectmen on the Charter Review Commission. Second. Mr. Sestari, will you accept if appointed? I guess so. All right. Good. All right. Mr. Sestari, please. Hard to get. We have a motion. Second. Oh, let's talk about it now. Yeah. <laughs> Further discussion, anything else? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, present, not voting. Mr. Starr is enthusiastic. Yes! As the, <laughs> all right, he's about to, he's going to re rewrite the Constitution on that. So, so you're the last member, so Mr. Kamal, we should now post something with this crowd moving. Um, the time is very, very short. We have our draft calendar. We have a, a town clerk's been keeping a list of, of sort of ideas. Um, uh, I think that we just need to post a meeting now and get everyone together. Mm -hmm. So, good. 2016 annual license renewals is the next action item on the agenda. The board will consider approving the following licenses for the calendar year 2016, including renewal of all alcohol, common victualler, class one and class two, livery limousine licenses, entertainment, and municipal street licenses. There is an exhibit which has um, all the applications, uh, which I'm not going to read. Um. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I would just like to suggest that we, uh, however we're going to deal with item 8, we do that before item 7. Um, That's a public hearing, though. Well, it's not posted. We can do whatever. And, and 
The problem is if you don't renew his license, you put him out of business without a public hearing. And so, the, so we can put him out of business out if we choose. I'm not saying the board would do that. But if the board <laughs> wanted to do that, right, we could we could do it after the hearing. I do I do question whether or not we want to take such an action without doing the public hearing. And the problem the, the problem with your concept, Mr. Sistari, not to not to um, not to jump the gun here on item eight, the um, owner of All Town Liquors had surgery. Uh, recently and won't be here this evening. Mm -hmm. So my proposal is going to be to postpone this here. Okay, right. that's fine. So, um, so without us deciding whether or not we want to hold that public hearing tonight, I guess mm -hmm. I just want to put that out there as information for him. Yep. Okay. And, and by my suggestion, I'm not I'm not trying to you know make any suggestions on action for I made either. Okay. Um, just seeing that. There's the potential for there to be having one impact the other. Yeah. Mr. Kamal, you had something to say? In fact, thanks to Maria and Jamie, in anticipation of this very discussion by the board, uh, the Old Town Liquor uh, License Renewal is separated from the common list of the renewals in front of them. Okay. I didn't read the list. I, I saw that it was missing. It wasn't there. I could have saved us five minutes. Let me go here first. That's what I was going through. Was right. right. <laughs> I'll stick to that. I know, exactly. Stop complicating things. <laughs> yeah. You're breaking your file. Okay, so we have the list of licenses, which does not include all town workers. We now answered that question. So, over, so we are going to Mr. Sistar. I'm going to go the other far, as far away as possible from him right now. So, Mr. Mosier, any um, questions, comments uh, about this? A few, of these, a few of these have increased by like half an hour or an hour. Um, just in looking over it. I mean, is there, through the chairman, uh, Norman, have you heard like a substantial business reason from these folks, compelling story of why they need this, or is this just let's, you know, see if we can stay open an extra hour? Are there any comments from the chief on extra hours? Um, I, I believe from the general comments it's a mixed bag where uh, clearly, there may be businesses who are identifying a business opportunity um, for increasing the hours that they are open. Uh, there are also other entities that are simply doing it as a contingency, should, they, should the need be there in the near future. Okay. I guess just my, init my initial thought is, is mission, well. just kind of mission creep across some of these, you know, and how it affects the town in general. I'm mm -hmm. just sort of thinking about it. I haven't staked a claim yet, but... You know, if we amp things up a little bit at a time across town, you know, a couple of years from now, now things are open two hours later than they were. Yeah, well, actually, I think it's as a, as a, as a former bartender across the street, one of the things that happens is that um, you just need, sometimes you just need time to close down and, um, you know, to, to move the people out and, and all of that. Like across the street, they had uh, the... the um, bar closing at uh, what eight o'clock or something. And the restaurant was open till nine thirty earlier, and that's why we had to change them. Um, and that's it, and that's what it is. A lot of times, it's just a contingency, like next door. Bills is why you know they're they're, they're moving everybody out at nine o'clock at night. And sometimes when you're leaving town hall, it'd be good to actually have a place open till ten or ten thirty or eleven o'clock, so that we could, uh, as town volunteers, get something to eat afterwards. If since we get in here sometimes at five o'clock. Okay. Uh, I want to go, Mr. Herr. You can this now. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Herr, over to you. There is a little bit of creep here with times uh, extending the day for different things. There's a couple where they're actually closing sooner, though. Um, so I'm not sure how it all sort of adds up in the aggregate. I am a little confused about the Cornell's Irish Pub application. However, um, if we were to approve it, I'm okay with a couple additional televisions, but if we were to approve it, it talks about uh, item two in the notes. The app can also request a permission to hold floor shows under, entertainment, under their entertainment license, but the board cannot approve this request. The applicant must file an application for special permit and zoning board of appeals. So are we going to approve this? Not a I think we need to specifically not approve that and say you must go to this. If we just approve this document as written, I think it's a little confusing. To it's tomorrow night, <laughs> CBA. You know, so... Um, that's the one that sort of jumps out at me mm -hmm. in the alcohol and entertainment arena. 
Okay. The others seem to be fine. Okay. Mr. Chairman, do we have any abutters or business owners here? Do you know? <clears throat> uh, we can do that once we get to the board's questions. Okay. So do you have any questions on this? On the so through the chair, there was no comments from the chief, correct, Norman? Regarding the extended hours? Yeah. No specific concerns. I mean, do we, Chairman? Oh, I'm sorry. Do we do we want to consider just a just a blanket time that you know say everything's done at like ten thirty or something that would? Yeah, I yeah, guess. I am already getting a little ragged on um, on times. We have things kind of all over the place here, yeah. and starting to look it's starting to look like it, very bespoke. Um, I, I mean, guess that was closing? that was going to be my suggestion is uh, you know especially with respect to alcohol sales. Uh, you know whether it's a whether it's a, a bar or retail sales um, through a liquor store. It seems like what the board should do. The easiest way to approach this is let's set what's acceptable to us, and then any of these requests need to fall within that within those boundaries. And if they want something that says that they're closing earlier, that's fine. You know, but they can't go later. No later than. Yeah. Well, we've already, if I may do the chair, we've already um, approved several one o'clocks just this year. For restaurants. The restaurants. Some restaurants. 110. Mm -hmm. Not every night. No, not every night. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. This is, the pro this is the problem I have. It's just, it's just getting very complicated. Everyone's got different models. And I think we just need to yeah. set up. Yeah. Like to your point, I think we just need to set a standard. However, I'm not sure that we're equipped to set a standard this evening. Um, it's like now we got to approve all these licenses. So, so well, know, I think one option is we approve all the licenses as is, and then we just come back next year and we do this early on, so people can change their hours. But one, one, one option is we fight our way through this tonight and figure out what Tuesday how I do all the The other option is we approve all these with no changes and then come back early next year with once people have a chance to yeah, think I about think this and do that. Um, my, my problem with that is this. taking things away next year is more difficult than just saying no this year. You know, if someone if someone has a liquor store that's open until 10:30 for the next year, mm -hmm. and then we decide no, we don't want them open past 10. Right. You yeah. know, that's that's a more difficult conversation to have. Right. But I think these hours are, are, are a combination of things. It's not only <clears throat> when they are trying to operate in town and serve their cl customer base. But there's also a lot of small businesses in here that are staffed by the owners, and they've got other obligations in their life that they're working these hours around too, perhaps. So I think it'd be very hard to say, okay, we're going to have all package stores open till nine. But we're going to have all early. bars they open. Can till close. They can close early. They can do whatever. Set they want. an outside number. We just—I'm not saying this would be the number. We could say package stores open from know, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And, and as long as they're open within that, I don't care. If but what if somebody in here is open till 10 right now? And it doesn't change his life at all. We do whatever we want. Oh, and the oh, he's, yeah, he's saying right. we we're taking away. We're taking away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but again, I mean, that, that, that would be part of our conversation. Though. We've got a, we've got a ton of different places that are open. All uh, it's not the particular hour I'm bothered by. It's the, it's, it's having I don't know what six different packages. Random all which have some different license, which just complicates our life. Yeah. I don't know why we don't just say it makes sense to be open until whatever and call it day. Gotcha. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I grew up with I grew up with eleven yeah, o'clock. Sorry. Suggestion. Sorry. This is an, I think this is an issue that might require uh, a couple of things. One, some in-depth review by town staff, um, mm -hmm. seeking input from different town departments. And also, most importantly, as is typical with all other conversations that the board has had, it may be appropriate to engage the chairman and the businesses on the topic. Right. So, in other words, I'm, one, I'm, I'm not so sure that the board could actually resolve this issue tonight. Right. So the, then, then that argues to either do what's been requested or just say no to any changes and, and let everybody and just figure this out comprehensively next year. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and if we were to put this to a vote tonight, the only way I would vote to approve it is if we're voting to approve licenses with no changes from last year, from last year's provisions. Uh, so th through the chair, so, so a couple of them have changes to the opening hours. So maybe we could just do that to the closing hours. But again, why do I care if we're going to fix yeah. this early in the year? Not right. to be cavalier, but I mean, why? Yep. If, if we're going to come back and do this conference. And, and we can change it without waiting until next year to do it. Right. So you're next, suggesting next year at this time. 
you know, we can I do it. I meant January. Yeah, right, January. right. Gotcha. <laughs> sorry, okay, so thank you. Sorry, thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant January we come back. All right, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> so we approve tonight with no changes, and in January we'll we'll look at it. First meeting, right. maybe second meeting if they right. need whatever. Okay. And then we do it in January. I, I was right. I, sorry, I just crossed out. See, I was but, so Mr. but, you know, wine and spirits is, is, is shorter, and then and Bill's Pizza is just bracketing, opening later and staying yeah, opening later yeah, an hour. So it's at the end. Yeah, so it's really not much change. But, but again, if we set hours, yeah. you know, really late, they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. I think we made everyone's life easier, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just find the standard. Right. So, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll move the board approve and renew all licenses for the calendar year 2016. Uh, as with, listed in the application. As listed in the application. But not to include the hour. With, with no with, changes. With no changes to the hours of operation from last year, from the current year. So, Go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll second just so we can have a conversation. Right, a second. We have a second for the conversation, Mr. Sistar. So, I guess um, the way Mr. Mosier worded that, that would say to me that other changes may be accepted. For example, the entertainment license expansions. Uh, you know, things of that nature. And I would suggest a, uh, a friendly amendment to that to say accepting the applications with no changes uh, from last year's approvals uh, so, that we can, so that we can have accepted discussion in January, discussion of the changes. So I just need another second. Oh, that was me. So right. I have yep. to. So accepted. I accept the friendly he's, amendment. He's seconding your, your acceptance of his second or his accept, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I second or you his could. motion. The only he's, thing I would say is the like only that. reason I don't. <laughs> I, it's fine. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's just not in the entertainment license. I was just concerned about there's only two things in the minimus, but that's fine. I'm not, I'm not I just want, if, I, if, if I may, but I just want to say that I just want to make sure that, you know, when, you know, a lot of these businesses are just. You know, they're trying to you know, help the downtown, you know, and, we're, you know, we're trying to keep the, as I said, places open past 8, 9 o'clock down in, in, in downtown so it doesn't look like we roll up our sidewalks. Sure. And it's, as long as we hit it next year, as long as we hit it at the beginning of next year, because if somebody like, like um, you know, the, the, the gourmet wants to stay open a half hour later to, to sell coffee and stuff, you know, it's, it, it's but I want to make sure that we hit it. Yep. You know, first of all, first of all, we're going to come visit this in January. Second of all, you're prejudging the you're you're having the pre, you're previewing the conversation you need to have, which is what do we want to do? And 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 right, businesses want to stay open later because they can make more money. That's right. So no, you know, charity charity is a wonderful attribute. So I think what what now is going to be that's the conversation we'll have in January. What what the hours we want to have, and we can do it at that time. We can decide districts if we want to do it done. You know, we can do it. We can cut this in many different ways. So I hear you, but I mean, I, I don't think that's to the, the conversation tonight necessarily. I just want to seem business unfriendly. I get it. Yeah. Oh, you are. <laughs> you, know, you know, he's a tax friendly, but we know. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Uh, further discussion? I'm good. So we have a motion to approve the licenses for calendar year 2016 as presented with no changes, either to hours or any other attributes of the license. And we have a second. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President Apple voting that's the Okay. So all the licenses are renewed, but with no changes from last year. Um, we will put this on the agenda for hopefully the first, if not the first, absolutely the second January meeting get this get this solved for first. Uh, brings us to the next event, public hearing. This is not a posted public hearing, so we can take it up early. Uh, it's an old town liquor's violation. It's an action item. The board will review an incident report filed by Hockenden Police Department on November 3rd, 2015, on a potential violation of old town liquors. 70 Main Street for selling alcohol to an intoxicated person. The board will also consider reviewing the all alcohol package goods license and common fixture license for WT Palm Court DVA old town liquors at 70 Main Street. And then there's notice. And, um, uh, oh, it is a post public hearing, so we can't open it early. Um, actually, Mr. Mr. Chair, yeah. I do just want to step back for a second uh, to the last item, if I may. Let me get through this first and figure out what's going on. Okay. Do we, is this, this is publicly posted, so we have to do it at 8, right? Wasn't it open previously? It, it, the, it, the posting 
did not require a bad identification. So it's, it's not a true. So legally, it's worth continuing. Right. So we're just legally continuing, it's not right? posted public here. I'm right. Yeah. So I can't open it now. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, already, it's not even a public hearing. I have to actually open it. It's not actually officially a public hearing. Yeah. This is, we call it a hearing jump, but it's not actually a public yeah. hearing. It's not, it doesn't have to be open. Probably. Okay, so we didn't just continue an open public hearing then? From no, last we didn't time. do it before. We just discussed it last time. I think we, said, I think we decided okay. to Okay, we said we needed one, exactly. Okay, <clears throat> so, Mr. Sistari, is your topic germane to, the, to this conversation? It is. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so on the last item before we opened it, uh, the town manager made a point that uh, the staff had had done a great job and they singled out the Old Town Liquor License. I just want to make sure that in our last vote that we have approved the Old Town Liquor License so that they don't go out of business as of January 1 and they have the opportunity to continue operating uh, into the new year. I thought that's what we were going to well, do. No, now. we didn't. We did not because it's broken out from the... Right. We're going to take that up now. But so then we... Yeah, because... It was not approved with all the other notes. Yeah. Okay, so as of right now, Old Town Liquors will be out of business as of January 1. No. Pending, pending discussion of item number 8. Right. Right, which... Which that's the same thing. Of, of the license. Okay. okay. So we have two things at hand here. We have to talk about the incident, and then we have to talk about the new and better license. Just so. Now, the information for the board is that the uh, owner, not the manager, though, right? He's the owner. We'll, we'll be only able to attend tonight because of surgery. So then, I just want to let the board know that. Then the question comes: Do we actually do take action? I know, but again, he just—that's just a—that's just he said didn't have to notify butters. It's just a, it's just to him. Like, you know, that. That's okay. why I asked the question. All right. Do we have representatives from Old Town Lakers here? We do. Okay. Um, do you know if Mr. Tetlow is good with us going ahead with this in his absence, or did he want to be here? Um, he asked me to come tonight. I'm actually the manager on the license. Yeah. Um, as you say, he had surgery. Um, so he asked me to be here and ask if it was okay with you um, that I represent him. If you prefer that you speak with him, he said he would be back and up and around probably next week and he could postpone until then. But then doesn't exist right now. Right, unfortunately, not meeting until June. Right. I don't see how we can't proceed. Yeah. So why don't we start this off? So um, uh, we will do this, even though it's not officially public hearing, public hearing for us. So what I'm going to do is first of all ask. Yeah. Is is uh, Officer Van Long? Yeah. Okay. So we'll have him come up, and we'll have the officer come up and talk about the incident. <coughs> Then we'll, uh, uh, then we'll have you and take questions from the board. Then we'll have you come up and talk about what your, your views are, questions from the board, and then we'll uh, take it from there. Okay? Please. Good evening, board. Uh, Sergeant Scott Van Rolf, the Hoffman Police Department. Uh, November 3rd, uh, the evening of November 3rd, our officers responded to a uh, hit and run crash on Cedar Street um, next to the gas station. Uh, by the time they were able to get to that area, uh, the reporting party, which was the victim in the hit-and-run accident, had um, stated to our dispatcher that the vehicle had continued uh, in front of Old Town Liquors. Um, at that point, the f a female party got out of the vehicle, went into Old Town Liquors, and exited. Um, the officers were able to catch up with that vehicle um, as she was pulling into her driveway. We got a description of the vehicle, the license plate, everything we needed and the officers uh, caught up with that vehicle and that operator in, the dri in her driveway. Uh, upon further investigation, um, they determined that uh, she was impaired by alcohol, uh, placed her under arrest and transported her to the station. Uh, I was notified uh, by the, the arresting officers um, that she had just left Old Town Liquors and that um, she had either one or two um, small bottles of um, alcohol still on her unopened. Uh, at that point, I went back to Old Town Liquors, interviewed um, a male party there uh, who had stated that he had just sold um, alcohol to her. I asked him uh, what, uh, what his belief was as to her intoxication. He stated he didn't think that she was intoxicated. As a matter of fact, she didn't make any statements to him. Uh, she simply removed uh, the small nips out of the refrigerator that is on the counter, placed them on his counter, uh, paid for them, and then walked out. 
the officers, myself, um, all determined that she was severely intoxicated um, and that it wasn't just a simple, just over the legal limit issue, and that was the reasoning for my investigation into the sale of alcohol to her. Uh, Mr. Marjorie, you want to uh, So when you when you say um, you know severe intoxication, so, so at that point, from from what you just said, you made the determination that that the clerk should have detected her state. In my opinion, I mean, we arrest people for drunk driving a number of times every week. A um, number of those people either just leave an establishment or stop somewhere to pick something up. Some of these people are over the legal limit, but not, say, severely over the legal limit. This person I felt was, and that was a reason for my investigation into um, the sale of that. Okay. Uh, we don't do this with every single situation. All right. Thank you. I'm good. Um, none, none this time. I'm still catching up. Uh, I know from last time speaking with you, you know, this is something that's still in, in the court system and Correct. all that. So I know that there's limited information you can give us, and I respect that. Um, but can you tell us any of the signs that, that led you to that conclusion? Um, unsteady on her feet, trouble maintaining balance, um, slurred words, difficulty understanding directions, things of that nature. And then the failure of the field sobriety test that she was offered. Thank you. Mr. Hart, was there a blood alcohol test? There was. Issued? That was, the, well, was what we talked about the last meeting. And because it's an open court case, I don't feel I can discuss that particular aspect okay. as to the, the results of that. The hit and run piece of this puzzle, um, was there any damage to any cars? No, it was like a, it was a, like a tap. It wasn't, it, there was no damage to either vehicle. As a matter of fact, an accident report wasn't even completed. Uh, for that because it didn't meet the criteria for uh, for no, and nobody was hurt nobody was injured correct okay um, so in your opinion uh, a knowledgeable person could have noticed that this person I believe a lay person could determine that there was an indication of either alcohol or some other intoxication with this individual from a casual interaction as opposed to an in-depth conversation correct and that's because, uh, what, the physical symptoms were so extreme or the... Or the Just life experiences uh, that anybody has had. No, I'm trying to say, like, what are the... I, I, I genuinely don't Older, quite maybe. know. Right, what is the, um, uh, uh, you know, I... How do I tell someone's drunk? They're, what, they're, they're, they're tipping over? They're physically... I mean, was this person sort of physically, clearly, obviously impaired, just in a casual, to a casual run? I'm just Correct. trying to figure out how much you'd have to really... Um, spend some time interacting with this person versus having them just sort of walk by on the street or sort of pass you by in a, in a brief interaction. I don't know if you can tell yeah. me that, but I'm just trying, like, how extreme were the symptoms from, in your experience? Like, really, obviously? Whole in experience? my opinion, there was enough signs of intoxication upon initial contact with her to not even do field <clears throat> sobriety that we would have enough to, to place her under arrest. So in your opinion, it was just transparent and obvious that you close Correct. Okay. Any more questions from the board? No, I'm good. Yeah, you just you asked about the question. I just wanted to know if, um, yeah, if 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 a the, the the clerk by not even speaking to her or anything should have been able to tell when it, when it was such a such a quick quick interaction, or is it just because officers and I, I, I you know, know what to look for? You know, as soon as they come to somebody's window, they you know, you can look at look at the way eyes move or, or the body language or something like that, whether or not it, it's, it was because of the, the officer's training that they were able to do it versus, versus a, a, an untrained clerk. And that was sort of what you asked. So, okay. Any more questions? questions? Not for this piece of the okay. discussion. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you come on up? Sure. So can you just introduce yourself and uh, sure. your name, position, I guess, and... and my name is Pam French, um, and I'm the manager of Old Town Liquors, manager on record. Um, first of all, um, 
I'd like to apologize for Bill not being here. Um, there was some confusion about what, you know, him not knowing that he was supposed to return for this. Um, and I think because he had surgery scheduled, that was probably what his mind was on. That's probably what he was thinking about. So I apologize for that. I know that there was a letter that was sent out. And um, I talked with Jamie yesterday. And certainly we did not, by any means, intend to not sign for that letter. Um, so I just don't want anyone to think that. Um, I think what happened was they probably delivered it when the store wasn't opened. And that little piece of paper, I looked tonight all over the place and still can't find that little piece of paper that they leave when they, um, a certified letter is delivered and the person isn't there to sign for it. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, <clears throat> as far as these allegations, um, unfortunately, I found out about coming here tonight. I knew about the incident. Um, Bill thought that coming here two weeks ago, it was all set and he had answered any, any questions that needed to be answered. So I found out about this yesterday at about 4 o'clock, um, Jamie will tell you. Um, so the preparation wasn't all that great, so I apologize if it's a little disorganized. Um, and this being a court case, um, I appreciate the officer kind of informing me because some of what he told me tonight I didn't even know because how would we know? You know, it's not it's not up to us to be privy to some of that information. But one question I do have for him is how, do you have so, any idea? So let, right, so let's be clear. This sure. Is, this is for you to talk to the board, not okay. to talk to him. Sure. So what I'd like you to do is sort of make your statements about what you think, what happened, explain right. any circumstances, anything sure. you the board to take into account. We can ask you questions and then we'll ask you questions, but there's going to be no doubt. Okay, sure. All right, well then let me tell you um, a little bit about our staff. We feel our staff is very well trained. Uh, we do have a policy, actually, about this particular thing, and you were asking how do you know if a person is intoxicated. Um, that's a very good question, and that is actually in our policy. Um, I have copies. If, if Would you like to see them? Okay. So this particular one here is what um, employees sign when they're hired, Thank you, and this is a refusal to serve report, which we've actually used at our store. I have a file um, of a few instances when people have come in and we have felt that they're intoxicated and we've told them that we couldn't serve them. According to um, ServeSafe, this is a book that actually is in the drawer of our store and this has the ServeSafe manual in it and this explains in detail to lay people um, what to look for when somebody comes into, this, into a retail establishment. It's actually the same for a restaurant. A um, little bit different in a retail establishment because you have about two minutes. Um, if somebody comes in to buy a nip, you have about two minutes. They put it on the counter, they take out their money, you look, kind of see if they're fumbling with their money, if there's any conversation, is there any slurring of the words, is there any smell from their body or their breath of alcohol. These are the this five symptoms, and they're right there on five indications that um, somebody is severely intoxicated. And at that point in time, we would look to see if they're driving a vehicle, if they're alone. We would try to ask them for their keys. We would try not to, to urge them not to drive. Um, we would try to get their license plate, and we would call the police department if necessary. So those are our steps. Um, we take that very seriously. Um, we feel that our employees work hard to make sure that we're running a good establishment. As you know, four years ago, Bill bought that building. He's put a lot of money into it. He's put a lot of energy into it. Um, he took a foreclosed, run-down building when, at the time, Hopkinton was all about aesthetics and beautifying downtown, and that's exactly what he did. Um, and he's tried to run a good establishment since. He's tried to put a business in there that met the aesthetics of downtown Hopkinton. Um, so we feel it's a positive um, addition to the downtown. Um, I'm not sure how many people know it, but there is a plan on the table, an agreement um, to sell Old Town Liquors. Um, it is at the end of the process, you know, the approval processes. I'm not privy to talk too much about it. I think Bill has shared some of that with some of you people. I'm not sure who. Um, it is real. It is happening. The next step would be for the 
new buyer to come in and file paperwork with you people to transfer the liquor license from Bill to him. That being said, um, the result of tonight could make a big difference for that. You have a beautiful building, you have viable business, and now you have a new experienced proprietor. He has another liquor store or is selling another liquor store and moving to this liquor store coming in and I think that's a good situation for all. I would hate to see this tonight inhibit or hurt that, that deal. Um, all of that being said, I have one question that I know I can't ask the police officer but I'd like to bring uh, to the table and that is, I'm not sure what the time frame is of all of this and I'm not sure at what time this alleged person bought alcohol at our store and at what time the police officer found her to be intoxicated. And that interests me. Um, she was at home, I believe he said. Is it possible she drank in her car from the time she left our store to the time she got home? Is it possible she was nervous about the accident or whatever potentially happened? And is it possible she drank when she got home? Um, I don't know the answer to those questions. I don't think we know the answers to those questions, but I think they're important enough questions and there's enough on the table here that's important to us to consider them. Um, the only other thing I have to add, if you do, in fact, talk about voting to renew our liquor license, which I sincerely hope that you do, um, there was some confusion about changing the hours of our liquor license, and we would prefer not to change the hours of our liquor license if that's possible. Um, if you so, see fit to, to do so. So we have um, had the same hours for years for, um, since it was Star Package Store and we would like to keep them those hours and on the docket I believe it says that you're voting to change our hours and I'm not sure why that is. Um, it's because according to this you asked for it. Okay, well according I, to this you asked to go, you asked to change them to, to Basically, mm. hours. Okay, I don't know how that happened, but as far as we know, we, we weren't asking to change them, so I'm not sure where that confusion came from. So, if voted, <coughs> we would like to vote to renew them you know, as they you are. Know, right, know, correct. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, we wouldn't do that. You know, it's because you we thought asked. Okay. Uh, over the board for questions, Minister. So uh, we're going to do a public hearing process. Are we going to close this? Is that what we're going to do? It's and not then really official public hearing. We're just sort of doing a public hearing. We're not going to deliberate now. This is just question well, time. I thought, we'd, I thought we'd do it act as if it was a public hearing. So again, proponent, right? Sort of, uh, okay, so proponent. Then we, can, then we can deliberate afterwards, I, I thought. Um, okay. I'd like to get the facts on the table first. Um, so the only question I would have is this individual, a the, the individual that... Um, allegedly has uh, had the hit and run and then allegedly purchased the alcohol uh, while intoxicated. Is this individual a, a, a regular customer to the store and known to the employees of the store? I believe she is, yes. Mm -hmm. You believe she is or she is? Um, yes. What, what, said last time she was. what the clerk told me was that um, I've seen her come in here before. That's what he told me. As the manager, as the manager of the store, how often are you in the store? Well, right now, and I'll be very honest with you, since Bill is selling the store, I have had to do some other things. Um, Bob Jordstad is here with us tonight. Um, I am physically there about 20, 25 hours a week. Um, I manage all the employees. I do the payroll. I pay all the bills. Um, I do a lot of the ordering with Bill. Um, but physically working behind the counter, um, I'm not doing a lot of that now. Bob is there 50 to 55 hours, and we are certainly willing to put him on the license if that's what it takes. But the store was supposed to be sold in August, um, and Bill started this deal back in January or February. So knowing that I wasn't going to have a job anymore, I had to do something else, um, and we thought it was going to be a very quick thing. And as you know, sometimes liquor licenses and, and, and sales and deals are not always that quick, and this wasn't that quick. So Bob has stepped up. Um, I don't know how many of you know him, but he's from town and has been um, here for, for many years. And he's here about 50 or 55 hours a week. And him and I work very closely together as a team. We talk every single day. 
Um, we do a lot of things together. Um, and we'd be glad to put him on the, on the license, but honestly, we just thought it was going to transfer to new hands before now. So we could do that if that's, you know, if, if that's a concern of yours. Um, my son is also there about 25 hours a week, has been there with me di since day one, day one, I'm sorry. Um, and he's also my right hand um, helping me to manage. So um, I know that's not a perfect answer, but um, it's, you know, okay. it is what it is. I'll sit on the questions piece of this. Um, no, I, I'll, I'll pass it this time. So you're not here, you're not saying that the person wasn't <clears throat> intoxicated. You're saying it was, you think it was a, di a situation that was likely difficult to, to tell? For the I right spoke person. with Kyle and he, he was pretty, pretty sure that he saw no signs of intoxication. I'm not saying the person wasn't intoxicated. Okay. I'm saying that Kyle didn't see any signs. Of him, and of the is, person being intoxicated. And is is the clerk? I guess Kyle is is he still employed at Old not, Town? Liquor? Which has nothing to do with with this particular situation. When was um, did did he quit? Was he let go? Yeah, he's been gone. Um, he quit, and it's been about three weeks. He's been gone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, that had nothing to do with Ky Kyle. Had not been there a long time either, um, and just wasn't a good fit for Kyle. No, I don't want. He's not there any longer now. No. Um, okay. Thanks. Um, you know, and one point to that, and I and I don't mean to make any um, assumptions about the particular person we're talking about, but it is right here in the Surf Safe Training Book. There is a whole chapter about tolerance um, and alcohol tolerance, and that's not to say that a person, one person, can be less intoxicated or more intoxicated if they're more tolerant. That's not the point at all. But tolerance meaning the size and the weight and the shape and how much and how often a certain person drinks, their actions, the way that they look and talk and the things that you look for can be very well hid. And that's right here in the book. They teach that. You know, they teach that the more tolerant a person is to alcohol, the, the harder it is. Our job is harder to know that they've been drinking. Do, do, um, do clerks have to be TIP certified like bartenders? Not all clerks. I'm TIP certified and I urge all my employees, my son is TIP certified, and I urge all of them to be TIP certified, but right now um, I, I can't make them. There's, there's certain mm -hmm. boards that can make them. The ABCC could, make, could say all of them. You could say all employees have to be, and insurances could, but I can't as an employer. Okay. Through the chair, I know this has come up in the past, and we've said that anybody serving has got to be TIF certified. Yep. It's not a bylaw. This isn't serving. Okay, yeah, good point. So maybe there was, didn't cross over. We've only said that for, you know, like, you know things to be drunk. Right, right. Yeah. Restaurants have to be. Yeah, like that. Yeah, no, that's right. Maybe we should change that. Okay. Any questions? No questions. Any questions? Okay. Uh, why don't we get you the answer, though, since you, you did have some questions? Uh, talk to Scott. And yeah, can you, can you just talk to us? You, you told us a lot. You told it. I know the answers because you told us last time. Um, she had some questions. Where's that alcohol drunk in the car? Well, how much time transpired? I was just went curious what the time can you just, frame sure, was. Can you just read it? So, uh, looking at our log, it appears as though from the time we got the phone call of the hit and run to when the officers encountered the operator in the driveway was approximately three to five minutes. And hit and run was immediately upon leaving the store? It was before, prior before. to the store. The, to the, the store. reporting party so she, yeah. so and watched her drive to right. the store, <clears throat> watched her go in, watched her go out. So that whole, from there to get fined in was five minutes. And the purchase. Correct. Okay. And was the alcohol that was purchased drunk? Do you have any? No, we sell, it, I, don't, I, not, I think we gave it back because there was no reason for us to hold on to it, right. um, but it was unopened. I apologize. You had a third, but I wasn't. Through the chair, it was uh, if she was in the house or not at the time that yeah. they. She was not. She was still on her vehicle in the driveway. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, okay. Any uh, questions from the board for the. Um, it's not really a public hearing, but do we have any.
others, and different parties, other folks in the public who'd like to make any, uh, make any comments. Okay, seeing no takers. Um, so now that now that we can just discuss it, you, you can stay there. Or we'll, it's up to you. I mean, you, I think we're all set for the moment. Mm -hmm. So the questions at hand are: um, What does the board think about this? Um, uh, if we have, if we think that something was done inappropriately, what do we want to do about this? And then the corollary to that is: What do we want to do more broadly about the liquor license that you know the um, uh, And we can talk about those sequentially, or, or else it doesn't matter to me. So. And this is just you want to start it off? Sure. Um, I guess for me, I think that we need to uh, we need to uphold what the expectations are of our liquor, liquor license holders, and we need to make it very clear, especially in light of the fact that year after year we have uh, more establishments opening, whether it's bars selling open liquor or if it's uh, you know the beer and wine permits or liquor permits, things of that nature. Uh, we need to make sure that the expectations are very clear, the rules are clear, and that they're strictly adhered to as best uh, as possible. And uh, let the owners and managers know that there are consequences when they're not. Do people make mistakes? Can sometimes this stuff slip through the cracks? Absolutely. Uh, but I, I, I don't believe this can be you know, uh, a three strikes or anything like that before there's a punishment because all it takes is one strike and a car accident for it to change people's lives uh, irreversibly. Um, so I think that uh, my personal opinion is that the board needs to uh, vote on some type of a suspension of the license. Uh, I, I don't <coughs> believe that the license needs to be non-renewed, uh, but I do think that we need to take uh, strong action on this. And in the past with other, with other violations, with, uh, with groups that uh, have liquor licenses, we haven't, we're lucky enough that we haven't had any others that were related directly to the alcohol itself, uh, but we have taken swift action and it's been decisive action and I think we need to uh, maintain that. So let me let me let me take a step back and actually try to just get to one conclusion because I think we're jumping to the, okay. to the punishment phase. Does anybody in the board want to talk about whether or not they believe, um, and it, you know, that we should we should hold the um, the old town workers responsible for this? Does, it, does anybody? Are there any questions about whether or not something was done by old town workers? <coughs> First of all, was, you, the, that's a good conversation, Mr. Sarr, but I think it sort of presumes that we believe that they did something inappropriate. So can we talk first about, do you, and since you still have the floor, I'll come back to you. Do you have any questions about what, whether they did, whether it violated our expectations about liquor stores, or are you, are you comfortable? Yeah, I think I, I think I pretty much said that. <laughs> so we're, so we're, you're, you're, you concluded absolutely that what they did was, was inappropriate. Just to that specific question. Right. Of, well, we're, just come to a conclusion about whether or not the board believes that it's inappropriate. Um, the, the, where, I, where I have questions is if Officer Van Ralton is right and it's, it, was, it was about three minutes from the time of the call in from the accident to when they caught her, she couldn't have been in that store more than a few seconds. If the purchase, if the parked, bought the, bought the liquor, jumped back in a car, drove to wherever the house is, and then the police found her. I don't see how she could have been in that store long enough, and if she was a regular customer, he may not have seen anything that was unusual. And that, that's the part that I'm getting to. If he was, you know, maybe, maybe if he was, had three or four minutes to actually speak to this woman or say something or anything, then I could hold the, 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 the clerk. But if it was really a matter of seconds as opposed to even minutes. Okay. So, so you're not, your question is not with Officer Ann Walton about the timeline. It's whether it's assuming that the timeline is as you said. That, 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 that uh, was an interaction with the purchaser. Was so that, short, a lay person, that a lay person could even do it. Because even their officers had, must have had, a, had three or four minutes or, or even two minutes to be able to make their, their conclusion. Okay, and so I'm, you're not convinced that, they're, that we should do this. You're always possible. Right. Okay. Mr. Morgan. So through the chair, I just wanted to understand where, where John was going with that. So, so John, is it because you don't think she was in the store long enough, or you're unsure if she was in the store long enough for the clerk to figure out what was going on? The latter. I don't think she was in the store long enough for the clerk to figure out. 
if you could, because you know, even if the, if you said if you said five to ten minutes, it would have been okay. So maybe she was in the store for for three minutes or something for something to happen. But if she walked up to the counter, grabbed stuff right there, paid for it, and walked out, that's maybe you know it, it, it was not. Now it's coming down to seconds, and but, but and I even think as a, I'm tip certified as a bartender, and I don't know if you know if I'd be able to. Do it that but I think we don't know how long she was in there because the accident was after she left. So the call well, the time accident was before she was left. before she before. was before, before she, she left. Oh, before she went in. Before she, before she went in. in. Okay. But he said the time that this accident purchase caught at home, and the timeline from calling in the accident, which obviously was some amount of time after the accident, but you know whatever, not all that long, to getting caught at home was at the outside. Level. Okay, I understand where you're going. Then. Yeah. Okay. Understand? I think based on what. Officer, or what Scott said, um, and what he believed to be a fairly obvious, you know, situation where somebody was drunk, there's got to be a smell of alcohol. I mean, it, it, that that just does not dissipate anywhere, shape, in any way, shape, or form. So, I would expect that the clerk, the, you know, they got to be looking at a couple of key things, and they just got to have a clear nose, and that's it. You can, you can tell that somebody's hammered in about three seconds flat. So I don't know how much time they were in there. I think it's a very good line of questioning. Um, we're not really a judicial body here. We're just trying to sort through as best we can. Um, my sense is that something was wrong. And, uh, you know, in the past we have uh, held uh, different establishments accountable for their actions or inaction. And I think in this case we have to consider the same. That said, uh, I'm very encouraged to hear, jumping ahead a little bit, that the license uh, is pending uh, a sale and that this store is going to change hands. I think it's probably the best thing for everybody involved. There have been other situations uh, involving uh, Old Town Liquors that some are still unresolved that uh, uh, play into my mind anyway what's probably best for, for all here. So I wouldn't want to impede the ability for the business to continue, but I think it's the best possible scenario that we encourage and, or support and the, the, the sale of the license to a new party. Mr. Chair, I just want to make one other comment. You know, there's, uh, you know, not that this is quite on this scale, but there's manslaughter and there's involuntary manslaughter. Both come with penalties. So it's not, I, I'm, not I'm not by any means saying that the clerk was there and he served an intoxicated person intentionally, uh, but nonetheless it happened. So where I come out on this is you start excluding culpability because of short interaction times, whatever, right? I had a cold, I couldn't smell, you know, my, whatever, my eyes were watering, I couldn't see, whatever, then you've gone down a slippery slope of letting, uh, you know, that, that becomes very hard to sort of decide when you're actually going to publish someone. The simple fact of the matter is, at some level, there's a, they, they either, you know, they should have known, right? And I think that's what the, the issue is. We have to hold people to a standard of, we expect them to perform in a certain way, and and these people are trained, and so these. I think the basis for me is they should have been, they should have known. And if there was questions, if there was anything else, um, uh, I almost don't care if the react, if the amount of time they had to do it was short. And so, uh, because again, otherwise you start getting this, the, these whole what degrees of, of how guilty were they, and I think that is very matter. So I, I just think we have to hold people to a standard, and we just have to say that's a standard. And I'm 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 sorry if. If all those mitigating circumstances came up, that to me goes to the punishment phase, not to the actual do we decide. So I'm very much on the, I'm not on the side of we have, we have to conclude this was not in the context of how we expect um, enterprises of this sort to operate, and, and therefore taking some action against them is, is justified. Switching to that phase, there's, there's two parts to this. I mean, there's the whole question of whether we should re renew the license or not. Just to skip to that, I would say I think we should absolutely renew the license. Um, uh, I don't think we want to put them out of business. I think we want to allow this to transfer. But I would say that personally, I think we need to give whatever it is, 30, 60 days or something. Because we can pull the license at any point. We, just because we renew it doesn't mean we can't take it away. So I would say, right? Am I mistaken about that? We can, if we renew the license, we can, we can pull it for, for purposes. Those are issues at our discretion. Yes, for, for good reason. Yeah, for good reason. But this, so I would say I would, I, would, I would renew the license, but I would say in 60 days, if, if the license hasn't been transferred, we're going to hold a discussion about whether or not this person can qualify to continue to hold it. And that's going to be another level of risk for them based upon all these activities. So 
So that would be how I would get around but not put them out of business, but put a very short leash on this business changing hands. And then in terms of the, the immediate actions, we had the only incident in my tenure here has been a few years back. We had another entity in town that had some things go on that were inappropriate with regard to the liquor license, and we shut them the liquor part down for four days. I think it was four. I think it was four days. Four days. It had to be over. It had to be right. It had to be over a period of time. So I would say, I think certainly causing this business to close for several days. Um, is an appropriate and, in my opinion, necessary step. I think we need to make a, make a statement about what, how we expect this, businesses to act. And statements without action don't carry any weight. Mr. So, Mr. Chairman. So let me go to Mr. Motion. Yes, I was, I was going to make a motion, but. Oh, well, well let's just keep this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to say, uh, in, in the last instance, um, I believe there was also a training component, albeit focused on a different area. Um, Tips. You know, and I just want to throw it out for the board to consider, uh, you know, possibly requiring yeah. requiring tips training for the I, I would agree. Okay. But I'm not sure if we can do that to one business without doing it to all of them, and if that's a different discussion, we can get it. So. And, and, yeah, and, and the only thing that I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, modify, when you were saying like 60 days, being in being in the real estate business, I don't know, we might have to make it more like a 90-day transfer or something like that, because th especially right now at the, at the uh, end of the year, things, things take a lot longer to get through. If yeah, that's, yeah. That's for all, all, you know, right, when you were talking I, about I that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just, okay, yeah, I just want to say, sort of yeah, sometimes that kind of stuff. very close yeah. to the finish line. Yeah. So I, um, the, only, the only comment I would add to that piece of the discussion is are we, are we putting some uncertainty and doubt into the transaction that won't allow it to go forward? I wouldn't want to do, I understand what you're saying, and I agree that we've got to have some sort of uh, window here to make it all happen. Uh, but I wouldn't want to add something to it that prevents it from happening. Well, that could be again in the motion, right? If it, if it transfers, if, you, if, it, if transfers, it, if, if the papers to sign it are signed in anything, whatever number, sixty days, like you know, for whatever, then then right, then it sort of moves forward. I think I think the board can make that that part, the lack of risk to the buyer, clear, assuming okay. the buyer is qualified in all other respects. Right? Got it. But we won't punish them. Um, Mr. Right for, you know, for, for what transpired before their acquisition. I, I, I guess... Mr. Kamal, you always have something to say. Yeah, just for clarity. Is the reference to any action the board might take post the 60 days in relation to when the plan of that board decides to take effect, or is this additional to any plan of I think my personal view is that you, we have to do something because this action happened. And so that's something, that I think the typical way we do this is cause a store to be closed for some period of time, right? So that's one step. The other step would be we need to make clear that this license transfer has to happen, right? The board has fundamental concerns about the suitability of this owner to continue to hold the liquor license in town. I think, the, I think in my opinion, the board is maybe willing to forego taking action based upon that fundamental question of suitability in the assumption that there's a, there will be a transfer of the license in the near term, whatever the near term may be. I think if it, if it goes beyond that, then I think the board is going to have to come back and, and revisit the questions of this applicant's suitability. And that may very well lead to the board deciding the applicant's not suitable to hold the liquor license, which would result in the business being closed permanently. But is that a double jeopardy? I, no, it's saying no. We punish this, let's say we punish this evening a certain period of time to take effect in the next month, whatever, we'll figure it out. And then 90 days after, it doesn't go through for whatever reason, we're going to punish again. No, we're going to have the option to revisit it. We may not. We may not. We may decide not to. I'm just saying, I, I just want to be clear that in my opinion, I'd want to revisit this. I, I think... I'm trying to think through the words. I, I think for a variety of reasons, I, I have for a period of time now, and increasingly so, have questions about the fundamental suitability of this holder of the license. Understood. I, I, I am perfectly happy that they came in and said it's good being sold, which I think is a good outcome for everybody. If it doesn't get sold, 
I am going to want to have that conversation about whether the board as a whole shares my concerns about the fundamental suitability of that license. Mr. Cesari. Yeah, you know, I think that I think that the first step, the the short term uh, closing, I think that's appropriate. I think that the discussion of renewing the license is separate and distinct, and I think needs to be held in its entirety tonight, uh, or whenever we choose to either you know, whether it's tonight or next week, but before the first of the year. Um, this, this situation uh, is something where before we issued the license in the first place, you know, there, there were events that brought question into the suitability of the owner for this business. Um, I think that we all, we were all able to accept it, uh, given the fact that the owner uh, is not the manager. He was the owner. He said that he was going to be hands off the business and he wouldn't be there on any kind of a day to day running it. He was basically just going to be, you know, taking the money to the bank or whatever. Um, if we're saying that we think his direct influence is affecting the suitability of his ownership uh, and, and the license, then that's something we need to take up tonight. Because even another 60 days, if we're thinking that we're giving him the license for 60 days or 90 days, and something happens in that 60 to 90 days, then as far as I'm concerned, we're negligent. And we've, we issued that with question. Um, if we believe that he is still hands off, and you know that's that's you know one of the uh, obligations of the license being issued, then you know it's got to be hands off, and and you know he can't be part of that day to day. Uh, you know this this is something that happened. I don't know if it was. It doesn't sound like it was directly related to his ownership of the business and holding the license. Um, you know, it, unless I heard something different, I'd have a difficult time personally to say, you know, no license. If I heard that he was in there day to day, though, and he was kind of helping the clerk out and watching over him, then I wouldn't hesitate. Well, he was in the building that night because he had for, he, he actually saw the sensitive. So he was in the building that night stocking the shelves, he told us. The only other comment I make is I don't think, I, I'd be careful about the negligence word. I think what this is really comes down to is waiting risk and, and, and sort of um, uh, benefit to the town, right? I mean, so I, I, I just, I, be, I, be, I, I, I think well, negligence is kind of a strong word. I think it just comes down to how, um, well, I think if we're talking sort of considering, considering how, how severely you want to punish somebody because not renewing the license is a fairly dramatic step. And, uh, uh, yeah. so, uh, go ahead, Mr. Kutcher. Yeah, and, and I just don't want to, uh, you know, again, uh, um, put somebody, put somebody completely out of business that, that put so much money into really beautifying the town by, by making that building and putting so much money into it. You know, if, if the, uh, the, the, the owner's trying to get out of it, um, you know, we also don't want to put him into a bad negotiating position. So he might just hold out 90 days just to... Well, and that's the thing. By saying that we're going to re... That's another thing is by saying we're going to revisit it in 60 days, you know, it certainly doesn't doesn't help them out tremendously. Um, but in, in my opinion, uh, for me personally to vote to take the license away, uh, I, would, I would have to find out that, you know, he's involved in the operations on a regular basis and, you know, and he's, and he's not living up to his end of the bargain on that end. Mm -hmm. So. Not a comment to, to this other statement. This is, not, right, let's be very clear about this. None of this is our fault. <laughs> so he may have put money yeah. in the business. Yeah. He may have done all these mm -hmm. activities. But the fact of the matter is, he's the one that hasn't valued the license, not us. Right. So, so we should never view ourselves as the as the bad party in this case. We're just saying that everyone has to live by the same rules and perform in a, in a way that they're expected to by the community. It's not our fault if you want to do something and then and then waste it. I, I feel no. I have no guilt over that whatsoever. That none of this is our fault. Nothing would have made me happier than never having come in our door. Oh, right, but we have to make it, if I make it, make it. Uh, Mr. Martin, Mr. Martin, any thoughts about where you want to go with this? Um, 
I'd like to go at the very least with a suspension. Uh, one of the things that bothers me the most is, is uh, when Mr. Tetlow was here earlier and again tonight, I didn't hear anything from the management accepting responsibility or reviewing their procedures to do a better job or anything like that. Um, Right, so I saw the policies, but you didn't talk about failure in your policy and how you were going to address that. Um, well, okay. do you want to finish your comment? And then I, I would like, to, yeah, I would like to finish my comment. We also have, um, I think, pretty strong testimony from Sergeant Van Ralton. And this would be a very different conversation if somebody had gotten hurt or worse. So at the very least, I'd like to see a suspension, and I think that we should put some kind of timeline on uh, revisiting this, um, the holding of the license. Okay. So let's, let me try to move this along. So, uh, so with regard to any action you may want to take with regard to this violation, does anyone want to make a motion with regard to anything? Because right, the choice is now either do something or not about the violation. So does anyone have a motion to make with regard to the violation? Uh, so I'll make a motion to suspend the license for for seven days uh, to cover two weekends. Okay, so we have a motion for a seven-day suspension to include that to include two weekends. Um, I'll second, but I'm wondering how we do that. So, so through the so chair. The motion and the second is valid, so further discussion, go ahead, Mr. Moore. I'm not sure what their Sunday hours are. Jamie, do you know what their Sunday hours are? Yeah, they're in their application. It is currently uh, Sunday is currently 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Monday through Saturday is 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure that they were actually open on Sunday. So, Mr. Sistar, does that answer, I don't know if that answers your question. So seven consecutive days. They're, are they open seven days a week? Yes. So, are we talk, do you, when you say covering two weekends, well, do you mean to, Sunday to, be to sure Saturday? We cover two weekends. How right. do you do that? So we could split, split it up. Yeah. So oh, so you make it. Days. You want to do a four day and a three day suspension, basically? Or we could do a longer suspension. Have we ever, just, have we ever done a suspension before? Yeah, oh, sorry. I, Is that the answer? Is that the answer? Yeah, he answered my question, and I'd like to withdraw my, my second. Okay. You'd like to withdraw your second. It's too late. You already made it. Uh, can you withdraw a second? Go ahead, Mr. Kamara. Just to, I will just just to clarify Mr. Moja's motion, seven days coming two weekends could be assigned to Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's what we were. But, but no, no, Mr. Moser was saying breaking the suspension up into, say, a four and a three so that it's two complete weekends. Or, or we could make it longer to be consecutive. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with seven days, but I think just se seven consecutive days uh, is my personal opinion. That's, that's my only problem with, with the motion. Are you willing to go with seven days? Uh, I'd like to make sure we cover two weekends. Well, it would be, Sunday, it'd be, yeah. it'd be one, you know, yeah. it'd be Sunday to Saturday, it'd be, it'd yeah. be chunks of two weekends. Okay. Okay. So you're okay with seven days consecutive. Your idea is seven days consecutive. Yeah. Ms. Gattino had a question about precedent. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, Mr. Kamalis, you know something, unless any of you guys know anything else. The only one I've ever been involved with was a four-day suspension, which was to include at least one weekend. Um, and I think that's my only experience here with this. Mr. Kamal, do you have any, uh, do you, uh, Brian, you've been here the longest. Do you have any recollection of this? Uh, I think that is probably uh, the only one that I can recall, and I guess if I can throw it out now while I'm speaking. Um, and that was for a fairly, you know, serious incident. Uh, not necessarily similar, but still very uh, serious. And I thought four days was appropriate then. I, I, would, I think seven days is a little high, frankly. Uh, and I'm thinking four days uh, to kind of match, to be consistent with what we have done in the past uh, for a serious incident. All right, so that goes to the press. And Mr. Kamal, do you have, you know, you have the broadest experience of any of us. Do you have any other concept of whether people in, in the general world, four days, seven days, any, any guidance on this? Yeah, just in the general world, uh, three to seven days suspension is, is generally determined to be reasonable. 
I think the cases at the Town Council of Fort where they included uh, instances in which uh, the suspensions were uh, three days because it was a first offense, mm -hmm. no other prior offenses. Um, there was also another case where this was, um, it was a six day suspension um, with no prior um, 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 violations. And there were, there were also, he also started a four day suspension for two counts of seven to in prosecuted offenses with two counts mm -hmm. in this four days. Okay. So it's anything between three and seven. Your question? Yes, it does. Great. Thank you. Um, as for me, I, I think I'm sort of missed to her on this one. I think seven days is probably going to roll on. I, 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 I want to make a statement. I want, I, I want to be cognizant of what happened. I think in terms of severity, I guess these, they're completely different incidents, but in my sort of weighting of the thing, I would say they're kind of, kind of similar in, in an overall aspect. So I... I I don't know that I would go for a seven days. I think that's fairly strong for a first offense. This, setting aside my myriad of issues with this applicant, <laughs> this is in fact the first, the first offense directly related to the liquor store. And I, and I, um, uh, I personally would, would favor something um, more moderate uh, as an initial statement. So are you making a friendly amendment? Well, it's not really my job, right? I mean, I'm not sort of sort of. I'm just saying. Right, right. I don't. I, I don't think I would go for the seven days. Um, uh, I, I think it's. I think it's a bit too long. I think it's too long for me, personally. I don't. I don't. The weekend, I 100% agree with you. I think doing over the weekend makes a statement, right? Doing, but I. Um, I think a week's a long time. Can I make it so? So if someone if someone's going to make uh, an amendment, I would like that to include the number of days and also uh, a deadline by which it needs to be upheld. Okay, Mr. Chair, you want to say something? Yeah, then then I'll make a friendly amendment. Then if if, if you want the week, I'll say three days, including the weekend, if that helps. No, it's too late. I won't take it. That's too late. <laughs> too late. Oh, okay. Well, that's what he said. Three. Okay, then. He said that's the. He said that the range starts. Is he said he said the first offense. Okay, well, that's why I was he just said saying. The rank, but he also said there was not, not to talk against them, Mr. Tino, because your logic is mm -hmm. right on. He also said there was another example of a seven day. It was a seven day first offense. So it really depends on how you weigh the offense and all. I think he was telling us that it's sort of in the in the world at large it runs. So can I can I just go where I think we're going to end up? Uh, and would you like to make an amend amend your own motion? That's a number. <laughs> can I amend my own motion? Of course. <laughs> I'll make my own motion to five days, the average of seven and three. But what, do you, do you yeah, I was going to say four. I think that we're going to four. Okay. Um, I'll amend it to four then, but I'm not going to three. <laughs> <laughs> Neither Mr. am I. Mr. Motion moved events has been to four. Are you good with that? Yeah, I think Mr. Yeah. Starr retains a second. So we, we're at four days. Do we want to include the weekend? Yes, absolutely. Yes, we absolutely want include, to include the weekend. weekend. So that stays. Week, is it a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday? Should we be? I mean, I'm I'm fine if we make it Martin Luther King weekend so that it's three days. You know, what day do you want weekend. to start on Friday or Friday through Monday or Martin Luther King weekend? Uh, no. no. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, We're going to pick the week. Thursday, Friday, I believe Saturday, it's closed Sunday. on Martin Luther King Day anyway. Okay, right, to, not to be a holiday because we want to do it on days they would okay, typically so be open. So so Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday. Sunday. So three, Thursday, yeah. four days, not a, not a holiday. Not a holiday, not a holiday weekend when they'd be yep. closed. Starting anyway. on Thursday, and you ending on Sunday. You want them to be closed on Thursday? Yep, so starting Thursday on thir through Thursday through Sunday. Thursday through Sunday. Not a holiday weekend. Within the next, it's by the end of, before the end of January, should we say? And um, not not a holiday when they'd be closed anyway. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. And if and and if a sale does seem to be accelerating uh, before the sale closes. There we go. Okay. So the motion as amend the motion as fully described now is four day suspension. Um, four continuous four consecutive days. days. Four consecutive days suspension starting on a Thursday, Thursday. So closed on Thursday, yep. Thursday through Sunday. Not a weekend where they where they'd be closed for one day in any event. And it has to be served before the end of January, or before or the earlier of the end of January, or the, the closing of the sale. The board will not allow the license to transfer until the penalty has been served. Is that good with that? Yeah. Well said. Yep. Okay. So we have a motion. We've had discussion. We've had further refinements. Uh, anybody else have anything to say on this topic? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, present. Not voting. That's unanimous. Okay. So we have ourselves a motion on that one. Now, we move on to Part B. 
which is the board considers renewing the all call package good license and common venture license for WT Palm Court DBA all Palm and Seven Main Street. Okay, so their li the license is up for the annual renewal. Can we have? Can we try to move this one forward? Um, I'll make a motion. The motion was like you want to say something. I'll make a motion that the board approve the renewal uh, to revisit uh, the whole the. Um, Revisit the holding of the license within 60 days. Okay, so we have a motion. People are people are feeling good about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so we have a motion. Yes, uh, I need to get a second, or I need to. Do we have a second? Okay, hearing no second, the motion is out of order. Mr. Kamala. Yeah, just to go back to the 60-day threshold. Mm -hmm. Previously, um, based well, well. on the licenses. Performance. I thought there was an understanding that the board would, would review uh, the suitability of the applicant uh, pending completion or at the time um, that there was a court ruling on the specification that this individual is facing. So I'm wondering how that would jive with the 60 days. So your proposal is kick the can down the road till we have a final court decision on this. Okay? Mr. Moore. So through the chair, so my comment to that was that was some thinking prior to this this incident. I mean this has been a problematic license from the beginning and and we all were very clear about the way this needed to go for this to stay a valid license. And it's not gone that way. So what are we gonna do? You know, I guess, and 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my statement earlier. Um, I don't know that the I don't I don't know that the license itself has been problematic. This is this has been the first issue. Um, it's, it's we just we just had we just had three members making strong cases for going easier on the suspension because it's a first offense. With respect to the owner and the license itself. Um, you know, we all, even even before the license was approved the first time, uh, you know, a similar incident happened to what people are questioning right now. And, you know, it was stated that, all right, you can't be involved. You can't be involved in the operations of this. And, you know, right now, if we think he's involved in the in the day-to-day -day operations, then I'm all for pulling it. Um, but if we do not think he's involved, then I don't see where where uh, you know whatever personal issues or transgressions happen. I don't see where it's relevant to the license itself. So through the chair, I thought that when he was here last time, he had he had stated that he could not detect um, that the he, person we talked about was intoxicated. Right. So he's in the store. He's doing something in the store. Shelves, he said. Sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I guess, and, and I, I guess don't know it, if he does it, or doesn't it, do anything. No, you're, and you're absolutely right. I remember that statement as well. And if and if and if the board feels that that's uh, involvement enough, then then certainly it should be up for discussion. If the board's expectation is kind of you know not having regular involvement, then that's a different. It's probably a different uh, you know def different bar that that needs to be crossed. And uh, and I'm not arguing one way or another on that. So. so here's another consideration, which is even if the board doesn't put that as contingency as the chair, I'll, I'm going to put this on the agenda in 60 days. If they still own the license, I'm going to force the conversation. So we're, it'll, it's going to be an agenda in 60 days. Tomorrow. Can we? So I, I think, <laughs> if I make I think chair, the message actually, I'm trying to... I'm telling you, with, with real estate, if you can make it 90, sometimes it, uh, I'm just this is a bad bad time for sales right now. This is business. It, it's a business, and it's not the real estate. And to, to the chair's point earlier, you know, this isn't the bed that we made. You know, it, this is not my problem. But, but don't we already have a sort of pending review uh, coming based on other situations that are unresolved at this time? Potentially, yes. So how can we tie it to that that's already out there? The, the, the only issue I have with that, Mr. Hurd, is that the timing on that could be a ways off. Mm -hmm. So you, you, could be, you, could be, you could be way into next year. I, I, as an individual, as one of us, I, I want to cause this transaction, I want to incentivize this transaction to close. And the only way I know how to incentivize this transaction to close is to, is to force the conversation about taking the license away for fundamental reasons if it's not closed in what I would consider to be an expeditious time frame. 
I, I'm okay with your motion. I'll, however, give my word that if, and if it doesn't happen that way, it's going to be in the agenda in 60 days because we're at least going to talk about it then. This cannot, this cannot continue apace, in my opinion. And so um, uh, uh, the end game is going to be the same, which is not to talk you out of your motion, but it's just to say that if, if it comforts you at all, <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, the conversation is going to happen if, if this doesn't come before us for transfer in, in a reasonable time. I and mean, at least then, and even if they haven't closed, at least if we know, right? So maybe we do it in 60 days, but even if they haven't closed, then at least we've had the conversation, and they say it's going to close quickly, and then maybe we do decide it's another, another 30. But this can't go on ahead if I don't. Once you make that the motion, right, what you just said, the reasonable time frame, you know, we're going to... And we're going to discuss the 90 day, in 60 days. If the, if the transaction doesn't take place within a reasonable time frame, reasonable can be 30 days, 90 days, depending <coughs> if anything else happens. Um, then we're going to have to look at the suitability of the applicant. Because they so said they could whole, add George uh, Stat to it, license to the thing. license, if that helps. They could change it. That, that doesn't solve that doesn't my problem. Help. Okay, that that's fine. Personally. No, no, okay, I understand. That yeah. doesn't solve my problem. Yeah. Right. So what was that you said, Mr. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, please. <laughs> what, what was that you said, Brian? <laughs> so he, Ben said, you know, if we can't get this transaction to take place in a reasonable time frame, we're going to have to renew the, review the suitability of the license holder. Right. Um, we've already got that sort of out there as it is. Um, so maybe that's the motion. That doesn't box us in in 60 days, 90 days. It could put us in 30 days if we wanted to. Uh, reasonable is so, uh, a how about, word. How about if I amend my motion to just reflect a review at the board's discretion? So just make a new one. So you want to go ahead. So I'll ready. make a motion to approve uh, the Old Town Liquor License. Um, and also that the board shall review uh, the suitability of the license holder at its discretion. Um, the, can the, we always do that, Mr. Come on, we can always do yeah, that. we can always do that. Right. So when we do, you want to put a deadline on it to revisit it? So it, I mean, again, the, just to be clear, the deadline doesn't mean we have to decide. It just means we're going to have the conversation. So would everybody be more comfortable with ninety days? I'm not, I'm not comfortable with any days being put in there. I think if you're looking at reviewing this, it's, some, it's a discussion that needs to take place now. And if you're, if you're going to say that we don't have any obligation uh, for a person's business decisions and whatever else they do and their suitability, then deal with it now. Don't, don't let the leash out and, and you know, let them keep going and going and going and pretend that, um, you know, that, that um, you know, I'm not. I'm not sure what you're pretending. It, it seems like you're kind of letting him down easy and giving him a chance to to, well, to make the sale. Let me just, I can talk to that. The issue for me is disproportionality of punishment. Right? I want to incentivize this transaction. This transaction has been represented to us as being very close to closing. I want to incentivize the close. Uh, right? Which is an this has nothing to do with the punishment, though. This has nothing to do with the punishment of the discussion that we've been just having. This is about other actions altogether. And so if, if we want to have that conversation, have that conversation. But to put it off 60 days or 90 days, I think, is inappropriate. You make a decision now. You don't give, you don't give a license and then say, now in 60 days, let's, you know, just so that he has a chance to sell it, in 60 days, let's figure out if we really think he should have it. I don't think that's how you do it. Well, again, I come back to disproportionality of punishment. Right? Right. Right. Now, you're, now, you're just, now you're essentially destroying a business right? and, 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 and taking away all the value of it, which I think is clearly out, an outsized response to the incident and the questions we have. I think, I think it's in everyone's interest. I don't, I don't care about the owner's interest per se, except I also don't believe in destroying owners unnecessarily. Right? I think it's in the town's interest to facilitate a town the sale of this license. Okay? I don't think it's in the town's interest to shut down a store that's in the center of town and, and thereby you know, excessively damage an owner and complicate a future transaction to, to open a business there. Once you shut it down, getting it going is really hard. So my, my, I, hear, I, I understand your very fundamental-based objections, but I would say that again, it's, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a fairly nuclear option in a scenario where I'm not sure nuclear option is called for. I, I, again, my goal is to incent. What I personally like to do is incent. I, I just all I, the only reason I said 60 days is I, I've done a lot of transactions in my life, right? You know, things kind of move and not. And if people don't feel a sense of urgency, some you know things can sort of lag on there. I just don't want this. To, I don't want this to drag on. I just want this done. 
That's all. That's, that's the only reason I said 60 days. That, that's the, so that's just my response. Mr. Moore, so, so where I'm coming from is, is we address the immediate issue with the serving, right, through the suspension. But this has not been an ideal uh, license holder for this type of license. And, and so to Mr. Palaco's point, um, do we revoke the license based on that one violation, which we just gave a suspension for? No. Um, but I, I don't want to encourage this to be a license that's going to be held in lieu of a business deal. I think it would be better both for the business and for the board and, quite frankly, for the town um, if this license were to change hands. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. So I don't think that that one violation on its own is enough to pull the license completely. But am I, is, is this the type of relationship that, that I think the town wants to continue to have? It is not. So I don't know if that helps you with where what I'm thinking. I, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, and I understand what the chair is saying. I think they're coming at it from two different angles with different rationale for achieving the same end, end goal. Um, you know, again, for me personally, uh, you know, my vote on this, if the motion goes forward as is, is not an indication of wanting to remove the license right now. Um, my goal on this is, I guess, acknowledgement that if we think that the scenarios that, uh, that, that give us reason to revoke the license exist, then they should be acted on sooner rather than later. Uh, if, if it's something where it's uh, and being non-suitable uh, for the license, to me, to me, you know, the rationale has to be that he's involved in the operations. And if we can, if we see that, then it should be pulled. Otherwise, it's the same. You know, to me, you know. Uh, saying saying that somebody who you know I don't know is is a smoker shouldn't own stock in Philip Morris, um, you know. Well, so what are you going to do about we that? Have, so we have an admission, Mr. Yep. We have an admission that the, an individual who we said we did not want involved in the day-to-day -day operations, the owner of the license, was in fact stopping the shop tonight. Right. So we know for a fact that we have a person who's in the building. We. So to your point, if, if I was to take your path, I would say, well, that, that's a clear violation of what the board wanted to happen. We should just pull the license. Okay, fine. I mean, if, if you want to go that way, fine. I mean, I, you know, because I, I, your, your, the red line you have drawn has been crossed. I don't think so. so the question for you is, do you really want to act on that or not? And if you do, you should make a motion. Um, the, the, again, my take on this is more that it's, in fact, more in the vein of a dysfunctional relationship that I would like to see ended, but without excessive pain and suffering to anyone. And so I would, then I think the cleanest pathway through this is to, is to try to facilitate the sale. I can, I can back off on the dates. I'm not going to fix any mm -hmm. of the dates. I, you know, as a chair, I do have discretion to put things on the agenda, and it's going to be on the agenda. So, so, so I, that's probably why I can back off on the dates. So, um, so. But I mean, if just to be clear, the red line you've drawn several times has been crossed unambiguously by the license holder's own admission. So the question for you is, do you want to act on it now or not? And I think that's what you need to decide. Yeah, and I think that I think that. Then you should make the Mr. Sistar make a motion. I think there is a motion on the table, isn't there? So I don't I don't know if it was no, ever seconded, right. I but second. I just wanted to say so. So when you're thinking about that, right? So. Uh, the license owner was not supposed to be involved in the day-to-day. -day. We know he's stocking shelves. But, like, was that the only time he's ever done it since we gave him the license? You know, I don't know. We know he was doing something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the extent it was, and that's why I put forward what I, <clears throat> put forward what I did. Well, he's a business owner. We can't be naive to think he's not doing anything else in that building. I mean, obviously, he's doing stuff. You know, we're right. either, we're either, either going to pull extent. the license. We've, we've done the punishment that's done. Okay, we have one, this is the first official infraction, right, uh, in, this, in this establishment since the license was passed. There's other issues, but this is the first store-specific issue. We've dealt with it. Now there's a question of do we renew the license or not. Based on the question in front of us tonight, based on the action we already took to not suspend the license because of the infraction or pull the license because of the infraction, I don't think we're left with much of a choice but then to renew the license. We can always look at the suitability of any license holder at any time we feel it's appropriate. 
And we can do that with the understanding that, you know, we're trying to get this done to facilitate a sale. If that sale doesn't take place, we can look at that license again. And I would suggest, I would suggest that the board, and I'll make a motion, I move that the board vote to approve the license for 2016 and uh, also send uh, official notification to the owner uh, stating that we're aware that he has been involved in the business at an operational level which is something that uh, you know had been discussed prior to the initial uh, issuance of the license and that needs to stop or the next time we see it the board will consider uh, retracting the license. I'll second for discussion purposes but I have a question. Did in fact we do that? That second half of your of your motion there where we, we said you can't be involved in day-to-day -day operations? We did. I don't recall that and if that's the case I mean you know, I think that that's. It could have been. Could have been. So, um, I mean, then he has to be reminded of that, which is and, in your motion. And, and 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 if we see it continue, I'm all for you know opening that conversation. Uh, and if we have any other reason to open the conversation, I'm fine with that. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any other for the discussion? Anything else? Mr. Mr. Kim, Mr. Uh, my only issue with that is it kind of leaves the door open for long-term ownership. I'm just not excited about that. Well, the chair's already stated that he's <laughs> planning on putting yes. this on an agenda in another 60 days anyway right. uh, so, to, to open the conversation. The board, the board has the right to discuss it at any point. I'll, I'll you know, admit that, so... I'm not trying to protect, protect or damn any business. I just, you know, I just want to do what I think is right. Okay. So. We have a motion and a second Any for discussion. All right. Um, so we, the motion is to renew the Con Victor all alcohol package good license and Con Victor license for WT Pond Corp DBA Old Pond Liquor and 783. That is the motion. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. President, I voted. Did you vote, Mr. Tom? I'm an aye. Yeah, so it's four to one, Mr. Major. Uh, so is the license is renewed. Um, you can tell Bill that. This is going to be in the agenda, though, for the second February meeting. And so if he still owns the license, this is going to be an even more complicated conversation. I'd appreciate it for passing that message. Okay. Thank you very much. And you were aware, and the, the follow up with the letter with the, the suspension notice was <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Number nine, the agenda, design selection procedure authority delegations and action item. The board will consider delegating authority to the school committee to appoint members of the designer selection committee to undertake the procurement of an engineering firm related to roof replacements at the Hawkins oh, High mate. Schools. The school committee would like to begin the process and is asking uh, that we consider this. So the deal here is that um, for any expense less than $500,000, the school committee we, has been delegated by the Board of Selectmen um, uh, the rights to, um, to pick their own designer and just go forth and do it on their own. For projects over $500,000, the Board of Selectmen wanted to have the opportunity to, um, to consider how to go about it and whether we want to do it ourselves or have the current building committee involved or something of that sort. So really this is designed to give us the option to put, I think Mr. Kamal Tony from wrong, to get, have the permanent building committee involved in, in, in that project. So what's happened is the town meeting approved a uh, million, slightly over a million dollars to fix Hopkinton High School roofs. That clearly obviously exceeds $500,000. So, so what they're asking us to do tonight is to delegate to them the opportunity to select the designer as opposed to taking some other alternative pathway, which I think generally is from all time wrong would include the permanent building committee. Yes, if that is possible, it may be the town. Okay. I'm recommending that the board consider this uh, request for the review. Thank you, Mr. Kamala. Um, based on a couple of factors. One, um, that the school community uh, and school staff have the experience uh, handling such projects. Uh, recently, they were responsible for managing the replacement of the roof at uh, Elmwood. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, secondly, I'm also looking at the workload of the permanent building committee currently working on the library project. The construction phase is beginning. Uh, the construction phase of the DPW facility 
and other smaller town projects. Okay. Yeah. So, Mr. Carl, recommends in favor. Any questions from the board, Mr. Hart? All set. Mr. Marjo? Nope. <coughs> Sorry. Mr. Pino? Okay, so uh, shall I entertain a motion for the board to delegate designer selection procedure, right, um, to the school committee for the uh, Hopkins and High School replacements? Is that, good one? Is that the right motion? We can move this one. Same thing. that we delegate the authority to the school committee to appoint members of a designer selection committee to undertake the procurement of engineering firm related to roof replacements of the Hopkins and High Schools. Can you have a motion? Second. And a second. For the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 President of voting that's unanimous. All right. Item number 10, fire chief discussion. The board will re review the fire chief position. So um, an update for everyone on the fire chiefs. So uh, we, a few weeks ago, had um, had the personnel committee or, or the subcommittee be selected to, to pr pr provide us with two fire chief candidates. We actually went off, them, went off and asked them to undertake a process and provide the board with a number of candidates. We didn't say two necessarily. We want several candidates to put the board together. So, um, the committee chair came forward a couple of meetings ago now and provide us with um, two candidates. Uh, uh, and we have been doing um, a number of sort of background preparations with both of them to, to go to final interviews. Um, however, yesterday, uh, one of the candidates, uh, the former chief, Gary Dory in town, uh, notified the town that he is withdrawing from the process. And so that leaves the board with only one candidate. And so the questions uh, for the board to consider tonight with this are, are I guess, several fold. First of all, um, uh, given that the current chief is retiring in January, what does the board want to do about uh, uh, an interim, or uh, uh, the, well, the other candidate, whether to make that candidate the full-time chief without having another alternative, or to, um, or to, or the other alternative would be to uh, uh, select an interim chief, which could be that candidate, I guess, could be somebody else, and, um, and basically we do a process to, to get more. So those are that's really the two options in front of the board now. Um, <coughs> Mr. Moore. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, through the chair, uh, Deputy Slayman uh, performed very well during the interviews. I would be uh, comfortable with him as chief, um, but if the board, through discussion, um, prefers uh, potentially a one-year interim as chief, um, that would be a possibility as well. Um, okay. His background of his peers, though, he performed exceptionally well. Okay. Mr. Sistar, um, you know, this is, this is an important decision, just like the one that we made a couple of years ago for the police chief. Um, and with an important decision like this, I'm much more comfortable having it be a difficult decision versus a no decision. <clears throat> um, and it's, it's no reflection on... Uh, on Mr. Slyman, but I think that we should get ourselves into a position where we make a choice from multiple candidates uh, and in the meantime uh, consider uh, an appointment of an interim chief. Okay. Mr. Hart, do you? Agreed on kind of everything said so far, in principle anyway. Um, but we went through a search process where we had, if I recall, 18 candidates apply. Uh, some number in that range from across the country after an, a, a, a pretty widely circulated search uh, announcement and so forth. Uh, and of those 18, if my memory serves me right, we had four or five that we interviewed. Uh, and of those four or five that we interviewed, two really stood out amongst all those other folks that came in from different parts of New England and perhaps around the country. So what's going to be different with the next search process? Should we open it up? and sort of start over to add additional candidates to the pool. That's the piece that I don't understand. Are we going to go ahead and do that and spend three or four months doing that and come back to the same situation we're in today? Um, my understanding is the search committee was, was uh, very appreciative of all the interest that was you know, shown, but really only picked four or five to really talk to, and of those really only said there's really two people here 
that makes sense out of this pool across across New England or maybe around the country. Um, and I just don't know if we're going to get anything different from a new process. That said, I like the idea of having choices. And we don't have choices, so I don't, I don't know. I'm being wishy-washy on it, but um, I think we're in a tough spot. Yeah, we're definitely in a tough spot. Um, but that's why we're, in, that's why we're here. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Slayman is a, is, a, is, a, is a great candidate. Um, however, this hap a similar thing happened to us uh, just a few years ago with the uh, school committee and, and, a, and a principal. Everybody dropped out and we left with one person and we, and we said, okay, we'll go with it. Um, I think that if we um, go the route of uh, Mr. Sestari and um, and put in Mr. Slayman as a uh, as an interim, yet open up the search, then we're absolutely sure, and we make we can make that tough decision, and um, because we owe it to the we owe it to uh, to the townspeople to make sure that we do the, uh, the do our best job. So, through the chair, just to address that uh, that comment, John, this is this is a little bit different because um, not all the competition withdrew, and and the hiring committee, uh, the review committee that was put together, put forward two candidates that we would have confidence, complete confidence in either one of those candidates, um, and one of those candidates has has now withdrawn. Um, so, so it wasn't like there was. There was one versus the other, and and while the the committee didn't take a, a position on a third candidate, um, Mr. Levinson, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think Lieutenant Mitchell also interviewed extremely well. Um, so two candidates from Hopkinton, and and then a third with a relationship with Hopkinton, um, but he he wasn't brought for because there was considerable difference in in education experience with the, with the two that we did bring. From my perspective, uh, uh, I like Deputy Chief Slayton. He's a very good guy. I think it's nice to be somebody like him. I do think we have an obligation, though, to, to evaluate him on candidates. I, I, I just think um, uh, we have seen, we have felt strongly as a board consistently that we want to be able to make decisions. And, and so I think we, I see no downside. If, if Deputy Chief Slayton is really the best candidate, then he will continue to be the best candidate. And, uh, and I don't know that I see any harm to put him in an interim position if that the board decides um, while we do another search, because I agree with Mrs. Sestari on a very fundamental level. I, I think it's important for the board to have choices. I don't think the board should just ever accept sort of what's there. I, I, I was, because I always said I was always comfortable. Remember, when we got this process started in the first place, I, I, I was not the only one, I think, even that said, if we come through with no candidates, that's okay, I'll come too, right? So, right, if there's nobody good, we'll just go back and do it again. Now, fortunately, it didn't happen, but, but I do feel very fundamentally that we should have choices to make, um, and thereby, because of what happened here, the only choice is to, to have the choices is to go out and do a search. Yeah, and we all, we all know, you know, so many things in life are just subject to timing and, and chance. Uh, so, yeah, there, we may have started with 18 and come down to these two this time. You know, them being, you know, th those two or <clears throat> three from town or with a relationship to town being far and above uh, the others. Um, but, you know, who knows? You know, maybe someone got jilted at their own department in the last month and now they want to find a different way up. And, you know, they're from another part of the country or, you know, another town in the area or whatever. You, know, you don't know what chance might might happen where we get other candidates. Not saying that they're going to be any better than uh, uh, Deputy Chief Slayman, and I would hope and and expect Deputy Chief Slayman to uh, keep his hat in the ring, and, uh, and then we'll find out. The other thing I want to point out about this whole thing too, and we don't have to have to go on this path right now, but just to think about this is this is actually one of Mr. Tino's ideas. We've talked about the 
about the time fundamentally changing, right? It's much more of an ambulance department with a fire department as the appendage. And so the, the, the raises the question of, do, as we go revisit this, would we want to look at maybe more of a public, I forget what you call the title, public safety. Yeah, public safe, safety you know, is our kind of thing. Um, so maybe that's something you know, you know, take the time to think of if, there, if we saw an immediate concern. Um, that's a second order issue, but I mean, it does, this does open up the opportunity to think about it more broadly, um, repositioning us for the future as opposed to what we've always done in the past. And if that's a conversation we want to have, then I would suggest we uh, try to set things up with an interim chief right now, and before we ask the personnel committee to start the next search, we have that discussion. That's a pretty big discussion. I know, but it is. But we if pay the big bucks. So, so through the chair. So, is the board looking to do an interim and then evaluate as to whether? we conduct another search or or is the feeling that we want another search regardless uh, I, I i and i think i'm hearing a bit of a consensus on this want another search done i want to have more than one candidate to evaluate for a fire chief position because what we were just chatting about was something different and that's i wouldn't start a search if we're not going to fill a fire chief position Search well, I think we'll talk about what that search is, what, can, what the candidates' attributes who want to have come forward to be. But right now, what I would, what I would like to do and what I think I heard <coughs> is I'd like to put an interim fire chief in place, have that seat filled, give that individual the opportunity to form, right? But I do, again, as I said several times, I fundamentally believe we have an obligation to to put ourselves in a position to make a choice. So, so through the chair, um, can I make the suggestion then that if we establish interim chief that we start the hiring process sooner rather than later because there are <coughs> some limitations on an interim chief's position versus a full chief that can make it arduous to go and extend the length of time? Okay. Again, I think we picked this right up again. But I, again, I my own point is, I'm not trying to cause more trouble than I'm solving, but I mean, it's just something I want to put out there as an opportunity. We may, we may, we may want to think about what we liked and didn't like about this last search and, and revise. So. Okay. so we have two questions to, to, to discuss tonight. Um, <coughs> if someone wants to make a motion, to appoint a new fire chief, um, Mr. Hart, go ahead before you want to. Would it be possible to get input from the personnel chair before we jump into sort of the mechanics of what we're going to do? On which aspect of this do you want his input on? General. He's a process person, so I mean, I don't want, I don't want him. We, we took his finalists and we said, thank you, we've got it. So I don't want to go to get questions about whether or not we should appoint the only I'm just candidate. interested if he thinks that a new search would produce different results. I mean, he lived it for six months. Sure, I guess, sure. Uh, I'm not sure why I'd have a good answer, but I'm sure I'm not here. Sure. Just, sure. just didn't hear this. Yeah. I guess I came all the way and you sat here for two hours, might as well get to speak. Yeah. <laughs> this is my question. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being our audience. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that, and I'll give you the perspective that my view is that you had choices, um, that we made a commitment to you that any candidate we recommended would be able to do the job, and we felt like we did that. We also said that we weren't going to present multiple candidates just for the sake of presenting multiple candidates. That would have given you choices. It would have made Steve easier, but that didn't, that didn't meet our commitment. We did the screening. To answer your question, I don't think it will produce significantly much. I also have a concern, uh, Mr. Starr, you were absolutely right. You said something about making um, a choice among multiple candidates. Again, that's exactly what happened. And when I presented uh, the candidates, I said uh, Deputy Slimmon was not a one choice. Um, so I just feel strongly about that. I also, frankly, my own opinion here is that uh, if he's presented, if he's appointed as uh, interim chief and open up a new search, you cut his legs out from under. And uh, I just, uh, it, it just doesn't feel right to me. So that's just my opinion. Yeah, it's not my opinion that we cut his legs out from under him, just like we had uh, an interim chief in the fire in the police department. And the purpose of the interim chief isn't to be making 
uh, uh, strategic decisions. It's more to keep keep the function moving operationally. Um, you know, as far as kind of getting back to the choices we do, there's no question that we appreciate uh, the work that your committee's done on, on you know, all the searches you've done, but from our perspective, police chief and fire chief in particular, and uh, it just, you, you did you did present us a choice. We didn't make a choice quickly enough <laughs> in order to in order to understand the choice that we were making. And it, for me personally, again, you know, I just I just want us to have a choice to make. So. Okay. So um, let's again let's break this down into two pieces. What does the board want to do about the fire chief position? Um, we have a current chief retired in January. We have a full time chief and an interim chief. And somebody like me. So so through through the chair, I'll tackle this this one. I'd, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, to appoint Deputy Steve Slayman as interim chief of the Hopkins and Fire Department. I'll second it. Um, okay, so we have a motion about second. second. I think the only comment I would make is: um, uh, Does the board want to actually do that, or does the board want to? Authorize a town manager enter a negotiation because that involves a contract and some other things. And so, do you want? I, I, just as a as a as a uh, like subtlety, sure. do we want to actually let him enter negotiations with him? Um, uh, because there is some negotiating to be done as part of that conversation. Sure, and designate Mr. Kamalo as the uh, board's negotiator for purposes of entering into a contract. Okay. As interim. As interim chief. Okay, so that's, a, that's the motion you said. Yeah, that's, that's very good. good. Thank you. Ms. Collins, is that, is that sufficiently clear to you as to what the board wants? Y y yes. Okay. Okay. So you'll you'll talk about all the elements of it, uh, including, I guess, well, I guess, duration, right? So just like a process. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that's the motion. That's the second. Do we have any further discussion about that? So. So that being said, I agree with several of the points Mr. Uh, Levinson made. I think Steve would be a suitable chief, um, but in deference to the board's um, uh, desire to have multiple candidates, um, I understand that as well. Well, again, I want to be very clear. I don't think you yeah. said anything negative about Steve. I think it's just the board says we want to have a chance to look at this as a board, and we're not delegating this to other groups. And so right. That's, that's, so I think I think it, this should never this should not be under any circumstance personalized. In any way, against somebody, this should be more about the board's prerogatives that it holds and and, and it expects to exercise. Right. Okay. So, it's, um, it's yeah. If I if I if I may, in actuality, I think that we're sh we're showing the uh, deputy chief that we we do have a vote of confidence because we're not just scrapping the entire scrapping the entire um, search and saying we're going to start right over again. Right. And, um, you know, the same thing like we do with Lieutenant Wallace and, and all of that. It, uh, we, we show a lot of uh, respect for him, and, and uh, I think it's a, it's a good choice. Okay. So we have a motion there in a second. Does anyone else have anything to say about that? Uh, okay. So all in favor of authorizing the town manager to enter in negotiations with Deputy Chief Slayman to act as interim chief, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? President voting that's yes. Yeah. So. We're going to go through that process, and Mr. Kamalo, we probably need to do it quickly because we probably need to find the first January meeting. I guess we probably need to confirm all that. Okay. So the second question in the board um, does not make any decisions on this tonight, but we can put it on the agenda. Is is uh, in fact made on twelve days. We'll just come back in January and let's put it on the agenda. Um, whether we start the search, how do we start the search, what the search include, all those attributes will we'll come back with another plan out of the meeting that Mr. Moses. So, uh, so through the chair, we could start posting immediately using the same post that we had before, and the board can still have discussion around process, the committee, et cetera, et cetera, and at least we get the posting out there. I would very much... Yeah, if someone wants to make a motion, they can. I, I personally would very much rather do this all at once and actually talk about what the motion is going to be. A, a few weeks isn't going to make a difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So good. So we're done with the fire chief discussion. Um, moving on, liaison reports. Uh, Mr. Sassari, what do you have any reports? Nothing to report. Mr. Katina. Nothing to report. Mr. Moore. Uh, both Mr. Hur and I have sat in on some of the school committee budget discussions. <laughs> 
I think they're I think they're working very hard to implement the programs they want to implement, and, and at the same time are very cautious with the money they're spending. That's what I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. I agree. The mindset I think of the administrators is, you know, what can we do different to save taxpayers money? while still investing in the schools to improve the quality of the education that students receive. And I think that blend and that balance is playing out well, and I see it in the numbers too. So uh, hopefully we'll continue on that path and we'll have a budget from the schools uh, that fits in with the overall town approach. I've also, uh, we had our first Pratt Farm, uh, is it called the Pratt Farm Team? Is that Pratt the Farm team? Master Planning Team. Yeah. Team, yeah, I haven't seen team in the... The PFMT, yeah, as it were, <laughs> in the past. But anyway, uh, we had our first meeting. Uh, Mr. Paula was there, and uh, uh, Jen from the Land Use Planning Department was there. Uh, she's going to be our staff liaison. We selected the chair, myself, a uh, vice chair, and a clerk. We'll be meeting two weeks a month, uh, beginning in or two months, yeah, two weeks a month, uh, two nights a month in January, and moving forward on that schedule uh, to sort this thing out. I'm very happy to hear you were chair of that committee. So I think Mr. Kamal did a nice job. So I do have another update. I'd, I'd like to, at one point, the board talked about um, the charter for the Green Committee, the Sustainable Green Committee, and I'd like to revisit that. I can think of a couple different missions for them, but I think they need to um, they need to have a more manageable quorum number, and and the board should kind of discuss around you know what's what's next for the Green Committee. Okay, good. So that's sort of a liaison report and future agenda. Uh, my liaison reports would be, uh, first of all, the library uh, is actually closed, so don't bother going there anymore. And it's, uh, next time you head to the library, will be a more or less brand new building. What about overdue um, books? Huh? What about overdue books? The fines are actually occurring at a phenomenal rate. <laughs> <laughs> so we're paying for a big chunk of that library with your overdue fees. So it's been closed till mid-January. I think roughly that will open up on South Street. Um, the second thing I want to mention is that we had a phenomenal closing ceremony last Friday night to, to close out the Hopkinton's 300th anniversary. Great good fun at the HCA. Um, lots of gifts to and fro. Probably everybody had a gift except for us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so it was, a, it was a wonderful end game to all that. We've said many times, thank you to all the folks that, that participated. Um, Genuinely grateful. It was a fabulous fair. And in that vein, I'm going to ask the cameraman to now scroll down and demonstrate for the everyone who couldn't make it the wonderful addition that will actually next time be in back of the selectmen's thing, uh, the selectmen's podium here. This is the that's your friendly what? time capsule. In that back. is. It's going to go right there where the case was. Oh. That is the okay. new Hawkington time capsule. That is a wooden bench made by a very gifted local carpenter who used local wood, local everything basically. And uh, inserted under the bench are going to be three time capsules. One's going to hold the, um, the previous uh, items we uncovered earlier this year in a, in a much more accessible fashion. The second's <laughs> going to open, goodness gracious, less than 2,000 pounds. The second one's going to hold a set of letters from the town, um, from town residents and town officials and other folks to be opened in 50 years in 2065, and I think we all plan to be here for that one. And then the last one, uh, which some of us may not make, um, is going to be opened in 100 years in 2115, and then also has another set of letters and all. So a beautiful piece of furniture. It's even better in person. Everyone should come to Selectman's meeting room and see it. Um, you may find during long meetings, Selectman napping there on occasion. <laughs> so um, uh, that's all I have on liaison reports or the town manager's report. Mr. Kamala. Uh, nothing at this point to report. Wow. Okay, over to first support agenda items, Mr. Mosier. Uh, I think I've mentioned a couple, and um, I think you've established a couple, so I'm good for now. Good. Mr. Katina. I'm good for now. Mr. Hart. All set for now. Mr. Sister All set. Do you want to a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Good night, everybody.